And we are live. Hello, everyone. I am Pruitt from WebDM. Uh, this is my illustrious uh, cast here. Um, before we get started, uh, let's let's uh, let's just have a bit of um, of an introduction of everyone. So uh, quickly, uh, if you could just go around, we're going to start with you, Greg. Just uh, tell us who you are and who you're playing today, and then we'll uh, launch right into the game. Awesome, awesome. I am Greg Grimjack21502 on the Twitchers and the Twitters, here for a little Star Ward Bound, ready to go where no halfling has gone before. For the first time ever, I will be playing a halfling rogue, an arcane trickster by the name of Elri Tossbottle. Let's do this. I'm ready to launch. Let's have fun. Uh, Kiana from Encounter Roleplay. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Kiana, and I am so excited to be here. My heart is racing. I'm just, I'm just so, so excited because of space and D&D, &D, everything cool. And I will be playing E-404, your Warforged Barbarian. And, well, all systems are online. <laughs> That's great. And Emma, Emma Lambert, everyone. Hello, everybody. I am Emma Lambert. I am WebDM's communications director. You may have seen me before. Oh, and I am playing today Hildegard Hilgard, my best named character ever. She is a mountain dwarf forge cleric. Very happy to be here on my very first live stream ever. Awesome, awesome. It's good to have it. It's good playing with you again, Emma. It's been far too long. And last but not least, we have Trey Murphy. How's it going, man? Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm all the way excited. I'm like, I got like the, the little nervous shakes a little bit because this is this is how we're supposed to get it in. I've already met all of my my lovely compadres, and we are about to be stalwart bound. Uh, my character is a uh, a half elf monk by the name of Daku, and hopefully Daku will bring some entertainment and a bit of humor to us. So, uh, hey, man, let's get started. Yes, uh, let's, let's do that, uh, shall we? So, uh, a little setup there. Uh, first off, first off is um, this, this cosmos, this vortex, uh, is vast, and uh, the, the elves and the dwarves were the first to master spell jamming. Um, and it wasn't long when, uh, until they encountered uh, beholders and uh, encroached on their domain. And there was a, there was an interspherical war. It was it was terrible. But in it, the elves rose the humans up into the cosmic uh, landscape because of uh, their prodigious birth rates and uh, adapt adaptability and learning new tasks and skills. So they won the war for them. Basically, humans did. And after that, the humans wanted a place at the table and wanted a space and wanted to explore, and they did. And things were good for a while, and that was great. Until the humans themselves uh, stumbled upon beholders in their own way and triggered yet another interspherical war. And it was devastating. It, it wreaked havoc across the cosmos, destroying most of humans, humanity's uh, uh, territory. Uh, delving into the dwarf and the elven territories as well and it was only it was only by sheer luck and uh tenacity that they held on and defeated them but in the end humanity was on the verge of extinction and elves in their divine uh judgment decided that they would resettle uh humans on four planets and uh not allow them to to travel the stars until they can relearn how to do this thing called spell jamming so they had to relearn the technology on their own and until then they would be quarantined shall we say and that that persisted for about 200 years until uh the dawn the the new horizons took flight um on 1571 and humanity once again rejoined the cosmos. But that was another story. Here we are 50 years later. We are in, on Nero's 4. We are in Nero's gates. 
which was one of the first cities that was established uh, when the refugees were first settled here. And it is the Nero's Gate pursuit. It is the celebration of all celebrations. People come from far and wide uh, across Nero's Four, and they want to come and they want to see they want to see ships and they want to see them flying. And this year especially uh, is, a, is, is a year to be remember because for the first time, humans and elves have worked together to create a vessel, a new vessel uh, that they think could change the face of space travel itself. It is the Dawn Rose and it is part of the reward for the winners of this year's Nero's Gate Pursuit. You don't get the ship itself, but you do at least get to be the cr on the crew and uh, get to fly into the stars on its inaugural voyage. Because space travel is, it's hard to get to. And uh, so people will, they will try anything just for a chance to just get into space and see what all this is about. So we find ourselves in the locker room of the docks of Nero's Gates. Our heroes are part of a, sk a skiff crew. They've been together for a couple of months. They've had a few races together. Not a lot of experience. But you find yourselves in a 40 by 40 room. You know, the smell of, 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 of dock worker is rampant. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a particular tinge. Um, you know, this is, this is meant, uh, Nero's Gates is a mostly mining and manufacture port, uh, but it is very important, uh, because of its, its proximity to the rest of the, the cosmos and it being the, the home base of the first flight of humans. Uh, there is a lot of commerce through here, but not a lot of, um, casual voyaging and it's expensive. So everybody has a reason why they want to fly into the stars. But we find our team alone for right now uh, with the, you can hear the crowd outside chanting. There's fervor in the air. Uh, you've already seen the harbor full of ships ready to uh, watch the pursuit in its entirety. And so here we are. So if you could, uh, what are, what are y'all doing right now? Elry would look around at everybody else, take a long inhale, and say, this doesn't look like a tavern. <laughs> I always start these things in taverns. Huh. Of course it's Stank. not a tavern. We just left the tavern the last night. I need you to be focused, Elry. I can't do this without you. I'm here. I'm, I'm drilled in. I'm ready to... Ready to fight, ready to rock, ready to sail. You can count on me. <laughs> you know me. Hilda pulls out a hip, hip flask and says, any place can be a tavern if you try hard enough. <laughs> my, my nerves are a little spent. Daku, who loves to paint, will find any corner, any wall, anywhere, pull out some paints or chalk and just start drawing what he's feeling. And he's drawing the crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the cool start goes and finds a corner and finds a place where the graffiti of your average dwarven dock worker, you know, hasn't already filled it in with, <laughs> you can imagine. Um, but yeah, you find a nice spot to uh, to paint the mural of the of the crew itself. Um, um, as the cool would be drawing, if he would cast a glance over to kind of get like a profile or something, he would realize that Elri has his foot up on one of the benches and is striking a pose for no apparent reason as he's. <laughs> Excellent. As always, you will make this quite memorable. <laughs> um, yeah, E404 e is currently just sitting at, uh, at I assume, a bench, and it's just kind of uh, just seemingly staring off nothing, the red cracked glass of their eyes, just kind of looking at nothing, basically. It's hard to gauge any form of emotion on a robot. 
he thinks they're probably just waiting for things to happen. <laughs> and as if the universe was waiting for that segue, the door to the to the to the dressing room slams open, and in walks in walks a uh, a human. He's about six feet tall. He's finely dressed, uh, and he strides up. And you have seen this man before. He's a member of the Merchants Guild. He's he's one of your your sponsors, and he looks around at uh, this crew that has been assembled and. Well, look at this crew here. What do you know? <laughs> not a damn human in sight. That's fine. I'm not going to say anything. It's not like I, I have any say in the Merchants Guild. But uh, I'll tell you what. None of you really understand what's going on here today. Because I don't want to sound like an asshole, but you're not human, okay? I was just a boy. A boy. When I saw the New Horizons fly over Nero's Gate, I thought anything's possible. We can do it all. We're gonna get back in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the things that I heard about in all those stories from, from, from beyond, from beyond to go. And well, well, it never quite happened. I went into, went into textiles, but uh, at least I look nice. And you look nice too in your little fancy duds. But uh, tell me, what, why are you here? I need to know that. What are you gonna do for the merchant skill? We help build this ship. You understand that, right? The Merchants Guild helped build this damn thing. And I'll be damned if we don't help fly it. If you know what I'm saying? Hildegard, you've been with us for more than a few years. Absolutely. Is your is your team ready? Do you think you can go out there? Do you hear the people out there? So there's just... <sighs> you just hear just the crowd. Uh, and, and what what do you think? What do you What are you going to do for us? I think I'm gonna do what I've been doing all this time. Work hard for you, get this bucket of bolts off the ground. And I give it a swift kick um, and uh, get some rust off the damn thing. Um, <laughs> and I don't have much more, more to say to this guy. Get the impression perhaps she doesn't like him very much. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, and well, we're a long shot, I gotta say. They haven't been together that long. The other five teams, they're all there. They're seasoned veterans. They've been doing this forever. They've been practicing this course for, who knows, a year? Doesn't change. It's been 50 years. At least they could change it. But I don't give a damn what you do after, after today. But today, you want to try to get on that damn ship, and you're going to go out there and win. Because you're going to get on that floofy elven vessel, the, the Dawn Rose or whatever, and whatever wordplay they want to play with, just so they can put it into their flowery speeches and make it seem all, oh, humans and our elves are together again. They're the ones that kept us down here, damn it. But I believe in you. Uh, mostly because I have to, but for what it's worth, I believe in you. So why don't we, uh, why don't you just take a minute, but Let's go ahead and head on out to the uh, to the docks, and uh, we'll see if we can get this thing won. Uh, E four four stands up and says, "I believe, from my calculations, that our chances of winning are currently around sixty percent. But perhaps when we get a better view of the ship, we will have a better chance." Mr. Merchant's Guild Man, before you scurry off, I think it would be to our best advantage to have an idea of the competition that we will be facing. Who, out of the five that you have mentioned, should we be most concerned with? Well, who, who shouldn't you be concerned with, Dakul? Who? I mean, you got, you got the first Turnian League team. I mean, they're the best of the best from the, from the FTL fleet itself, okay? So... What are you going to do against seasoned sailors? I don't know. I hope you got something. Then you got the Magate Acadium, the mages themselves, the people who build these damn things. They know them inside and out. They're the other people that help build this damn ship. You don't think they want to be on it? They're a bunch of humans. This is what it all, this is, this is the whole ballpark for them. This is the whole thing. And then I'd maybe be worried about them, uh, the captain's team. Again, seasoned sailors. 
These people sail every day of their life. Do you sail every day of your life, Dakul? I would not say every day. Well, you're sailing today, and I hope you do a damn good job. I really do. But uh, those are the three I'd really worry about. You know, Forrester's Hollow, the gnomes. Eh, they're all right. Lockport, what do they know? It's a lake. <laughs> but yeah, I believe in you, though. You, uh... Well, because I have to. I believe we'll get the job done. Is if catching the wind is as easy as catching Elroy, I believe we'll be all right. Well, all right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and head out, but uh, you uh you do it. You you break a leg out there. Thank you, sir. Always good for the motivational speeches. Well, I hope so. <laughs> All right, so uh, so he leaves the door and uh, leaves the door open and walks walks down off down a hallway and the 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 sound from the crowd is 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 much louder now, um, and you you know you can hear it droning down through the tunnels. Uh, and you you hear some activity from from what you would assume are other other locker rooms, possibly the other teams uh, preparing themselves. And uh, so, there you are. Okay. What I, I feel like we need to bring attention to the fact that we have a very strange group. <laughs> <laughs> in all forms, in all ways, we are a really weird group. <laughs> we walk out into the scene. Um, that's what, um, E-404 stands at about six foot five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, y'all, <laughs> yeah. And then we have the dwarf and the half and the half elf. <laughs> it's a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty, it's pretty great, uh, pretty great crew you got. So, uh, y'all, uh, go ahead and begin to, uh, head out, uh, into the, uh, harbor itself. As you, uh, as you leave the room, you walk down the tunnel. And you indeed see other other doors opening up, uh, other teams filtering out in the distance. You think you can make out the silhouettes of of maybe some a, a dwarf and an elf and some humans, and there's banter going on between them. Um, and uh, uh, Dakul, as you uh, as you exit, uh, you hear a, you hear a familiar voice uh, uh, you haven't heard in in a little while. But since your uh, your days with the gnomes up at Forester's Hollow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a familiar voice, name of Bobo Lodel, and he uh, he chimes in. He's like, "Hey, uh, the cool, why don't you come over here? I want to want to talk to you before the race." I know that voice. Yeah, of course you know this voice. Yes, yes. What what must we speak about? Yes. Well, you know, it's been a while, and uh, just finding out finding out that you uh, you're in this race too. You know. Just saying. Well, I'm happy for the support. Yes, every little bit helps. So what can I win for you? What can I bring for you? How can I make your day better? Well, you know, I thought I was going to have to bring it up, but since you just brought it up, here's the thing. And he kind of like moves a little bit further away from everybody so that, uh, you know, no one else can overhear. Um... It's like, see, here's, here's the thing. The gnomes, we had a bad run of it earlier today. We had a whole thing up at the uh, at Flavortown at the food cot. Some cr- some crazy shit went on. There was a gibbering mal a gibbering malder. I don't even know. I don't know. It was some crazy stuff. But gnomes, we had a, we got a bad rap today, and uh, we really need a win. So, how do you can do to help out? See if you can like maybe just help your brother out here. Maybe, uh, maybe you could help us out. Not saying you got to throw the race. Just don't do your best, you know? I could make it worth your while, too. Hmm. I hear what you're saying. I have to think about this for a minute. If you know me. I try to do the honorable thing at all times. But sometimes things can happen. In the meantime, 
can I just say, I will try and see what happens. Yeah, because like I said, I, uh, I could make it worth your while. Oh, I've, heard, I've heard some things. What, what have you heard? Well, you know, we do, we do business with the, you know, the monastery where you learned how to do your mojo. <laughs> My mojo, he says. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, just saying, I might have uh, uncovered a bit, of, a bit of info that you, uh, you've been looking for. Oh, really? I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't know. Huh. I just, I hear things. You know, sometimes I hear things and I could maybe bring it to you. Uh, so, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, we got obviously got a race out here, yeah. but you help us out. Well, this is what I shall say. Just wait and see what happens. But your information has certainly have my interest piqued. Mm, that's good. That's good. You know, because we got to look out for each other. We go back before this race and everything. and We, you know. Yes, we do go back to the spiders. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh. But, uh, I remember when you freaked out the first time you went in to go harvest those bastards. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> ah, you funny gnomes. You think you have all the jokes. Huh? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You, uh, you're you a good enough one yourself. Oh, I'm just ribbing you. Just ribbing you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll see you on the course, man. We'll see you on the course. Oh, be well, my friend. Yeah, you too, you too. And as you're, uh, you're heading back out, um, <clears throat> you begin to uh, step out into the harbor proper. Okay. And this is, this is where um, you're on the west side of Nero's Gates and you look out the four tiers of the of of the city itself going up to the very top of the cliffside and there are people at the lining the tops of every wall there are there's confetti there's uh it's mostly just like red petals obviously the dawn rose being the 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 crown piece here in this this festivities it's there's a theme and uh you know you hear you hear uh, a speech being given from uh from the pedestrian walkway spanning between the two sides of the city um and in the harbor there are just ships you just see sails like into the distance as you as you can see like all these ships that come in and they've begun actually filtering like through the harbor and moving further inland because uh they want to move underneath uh where the race course will actually take place and you can see like as people the ships have started to move through um but they just keep going and keep going and there's just chanting and screaming and there's people like waving the colors of each team. Um, the, 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 the blue and white of the FTL fleet is in prominent display. Um, it's only been about 20 years since it was uh, established and, you know, humanity really wants to do its part to, uh, to uh, help the, uh, the cosmic effort. Um, of course, the, the green and brown of Forrester's Hollow, um, you know, where the gnomes, uh, the gnomes harvest silk from spiders that the majority of the ropes and sails are made from the fabric of that uh, here in Nero's Gates. There's the, uh, the Magate Acadium in their red and black, um, the, the Mages College here um, as they move to their, to their skiffs. The Captain's Team, which is uh, in gold and blue and just very pompous, uh, of course. Um, and, then, and then Lockport, which is just like, Plain brown, like they're just, they have one color. It's brown. They just found it. Um, and so everybody's uh, kind of moving there and there's, there's quite a fervor. Um, uh, and in, 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 in the noise, uh, uh, Emma, you, you, you feel kind of a, a tap at your shoulder. Um, uh, and you, you turn around to see kind of a, um, kind of a, 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 he's a dwarf, right? But he looks like a dwarf that really hasn't seen a hard day of labor in his life. Um, and you recognize him, you recognize him pretty uh, quickly from uh, a, a certain mining expedition that you went on not too long ago. And uh, he comes up and it's like, uh, hey, uh, Hildy, how's it going? It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. Has been, has been. How are you? Looks like you're working Yeah, yeah, hard. yeah. Yeah, you you remember me, Burke? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm here. I'm you know 
still with the mining company. Um, I really appreciate, uh, really appreciate the work you put in, in that expedition. It really helped out. Um, and he, 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 you see him kind of this whole time glancing over at E404. Yes. Um, I moved to position my body slightly in between him and E404. Say, it was my pleasure. It will be something I remember for the rest of my life. Uh, what can I do for you, Burke? Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to bring, this is a bad time to bring this up, right? Um, yeah, yeah but, whatever it is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I, I don't want to hold you up. I don't want to hold you up. You got a whole race you got to get to. But, you know, the, the company is going to push forward um, in in trying to acquire, and he kind of like, leers and kind of nods at e404 it's like i mean it was it was in our minds i know it was your it was your find and it was your idea to go to that particular particular shaft and 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 but it was in our minds and you know think of the things we could do if we had a had a whole fleet of these of these things how we could mine safe worker safety i mean we could we could we could advance we could advance our companies and we'd bring you in on it Oh, yes, Burke. I've actually spent a great deal of my time thinking about the things you could do. And I'm going to go win this race. And I think it's going to work out. Oh, you've, you're trying to want to get off planet, are you? Maybe. Maybe. But like you said, it was my find. If you would like to talk to E404, see what E404 wants to do, that is fine. But I am so sick and tired of your dwarven approach to machinery. There's so much more in the world than that. Well, I mean, they're, they're, you both, we both know they're tools. I mean, they're just tools, right? I, I, you're a tool, for sure. Oh. There are other people who are more than you, Burke. Okay. I, 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 he'll, I, don't, I don't want to put you off at the beginning of this race. I know you got to focus... Um, so I, I'll just, I'll leave you. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to help you out. I want to get you in on the action sure. up front. So, I'm, you know, Burke, I'm 275 years old. Oh, two, 275. You don't look a day over 250. Burke, shut the fuck up. Really? I've seen people like you come and go. You're never going to do anything interesting with your life. E404 might. And that's what I'm doing. Okay, so I'll I'll take your word I'll take your word to my higher up hires up. Sorry, I didn't didn't mean to uh, didn't mean to rouse you. My bad. Have a good day. Enjoy the race. <clears throat> and he kind of saunters off into the crowd, giving one last look over his shoulder at E four hundred four, and just you know shaking his head as he walks, uh, kind of just disappears back up into uh, the first tier, uh, looking around. Uh, you can see the competitors uh, beginning to take their place. You know, the the in the FTL uh, on the FTL boat, it looks like there's three elves and one human, and looks like the elves are pretty much just ordering the human around. Uh, Forester's Hollow, they're they're doing their thing. A couple of gnomes, a couple of humans. Um, the uh, in the on the captain's team, uh, you see one of their one of their player one of their team members. She like hops in the harbor. And, you know, splashes around for a bit and then cops back out and slings some water off. And she's, you know, quite attractive. And her teammates are just like, every time, every time, you know. And, you know, everybody's taking their places. So what do y'all do? Um, as they're approaching, you know, going down the dock, uh, with E-404's permission, Elry would uh, scamper up and kind of sit cross-legged hanging off of her you know sit you know piggyback style and as they're walking down he would just kind of have his elbows on the top of e404's head and every once in a while seeing the the, the captain you know the captain's team someone jumps in the water and looks around he leans down and whispers to e404 and he says what do you see when you look at all this do you do you see the same things that we do uh, E404, yeah, it, E404 is used to having Elry just kind of onto them, and uh, E404 said, if you are talking about 
visual input, then I do believe I see the same thing as you. What's the first thing you see? Just first thing pops into your this and he kind of holds on to its head. What's the first <laughs> thing? First. first. Um, E4 is kind of pauses for a moment. I see, I see crews getting prepared for races. I do not know what you are asking specifically. Yes. Wanted to see if you saw anything different. You know what I see? And he kind of puts his hands back like this. Do you know what I see? What? Losers. Everywhere. Losers. The one swimming? Loser. You know, all the gnomes over there talking about stuff? Losers. All of them. Losers. You want to know why? We haven't even done the race yet. How would you know? It's, it, it's a halfling thing. It's a halfling thing. We're lucky. And I can tell when other people are losers. We have a her, and he points to Hilda. He goes, we have a him, and he points to the cool. And he then does a pat on the top of E-404's head. And we have you. They're losers. Well, if you say so, then I believe you, Elvry. I like the sound of that. Just believing. We can never stop. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, assuming that y'all uh, move to uh, the Merchant's Guild Racing Skiff, um, begin to take your places. Um, where, where, uh, describe where you, uh, where you head to with the, uh, with regards to the spell jamming helm, which is at the back of the skiff. It's about the skiff itself is about thirty feet long, maybe fifteen feet wide, flat bottom. It only has like a mainsail and a jib. Um, it's built for speed. Uh, I mean, this is a, this, the race itself is a bit of an endurance test. I mean, it, it takes place over about five or six hours. It spans a lot of distance, but these things can cover a lot of distance, uh, very quickly. And so it's, um, so anyway, uh, describe how you, uh, board the ship. Hilda oh. goes to the very back of the ship and does some very uncool looking exercises, grumbles something about no lumbar support for these damn things, um, and gets right in the pilot's seat. I want to, is the, is the skiff like slightly above everybody else that's watching the race? Is it, is it a good view of everybody that's, that's paying attention to us? that's ready to watch the race oh you're you're at the basically at the floor of the coliseum i mean okay, when you no, look up and see just no. years of 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 the buildings and the people above and people across the arches of nero's gates and all the ships around you y'all are the center of attention right now can i scan the crowd and look for Bobo Lodal? uh you don't have to scan the crowd Bobo Lodal is in the ship right next to you in the in the helm so, and kind of you look over and he's like hey how's it going the cool well, I'll wave back and I want to walk towards Eldry. Uh, I, I'm assuming Eldry's right next to me or close to it. Mm -hmm. He's always right next to you. Always next to me. <laughs> if he's not on E4, he's always right next to you. The dwarf scares him, so he's <laughs> always goes back and forth between the two of you. Eldry, you're a man of the world. Excuse me, a halfling of the world. Thank you. Do you remember Babo Lodo? I remember you saying that he was. Well, what was the language you used? He was sort of a... Yeah, sort of a, uh, a misfits, if you will, a bit. Yeah, um, I can add that, right, yeah. Yeah, but he, he offered me uh, something that I must muse upon. He's, him and his gnomish friends are desperate to win and they would show me great favor in finding out a, a, a truth that I've been looking for for a very long time but for a cost that I'm not willing to produce. He wants us to lose the race. He wants us to throw it? Yes, that is the world I am looking for. He wants us to throw the race. I am only speaking directly to you because I want to know how you feel about this. Um, my knee jerk is I hate to lose. Um, my second knee jerk is 
I'd have really hate to lose to a gnome. But I mean, I'll do whatever you want, the cool. But what about Hilda and E four hundred four? I mean, hmm. I have no, friend. I have no plans on losing the race. We shall remain victorious. I just want you to keep a careful eye upon him and his group, and look for any opportunity that might present itself. Oh, I can do that. Um, this thing that you need is it something that could be taken? I don't know if it can be taken, but better to be explained. I've been walking around in this fog, and I need some type of guidance. Hmm. Well, maybe there's a way to get it from him and still win. Exactly, my halfling friend. We are on the same page. Good. Because I'm not sure what book we're reading. But <laughs> I, I'm here to help you, Dakul. So... Let's Excellent. Do it. Let's let's keep this to ourselves for the time being until the moment presents itself. Will do. Um, at that point, uh, for the remainder of the prep time, uh, Elri is going to be climbing up the main and attaching lengths of weighted with uh, like large kind of half cannonball uh, bearings on the end of these long like fifty foot silk ropes and he's arranging them throughout the ship within easy grabbing distance. Alrighty. <laughs> Is anyone else doing anything uh, special to prepare? Is is there a way that with my with my my health elf vision uh, that I can see any type of tactical advantage within the course? Can I can I scan what I think the course is going to be? Uh, well, the course is, is spread out over uh, a couple of hundred miles. Okay. So you're going to be going into the bay, um, uh, turning turning east, uh, swinging around through the uh, lake lakeside rise mountains, and then you swing back southwest and loop around the Iron Woods and then come back through Nero's Gates. And so the, uh, the course itself is, uh, it, like I said, spread out over the... the first part of the this inlet sea and uh you see the ships all kind of sailing through the gates and into the into the little bay area uh just so because like i said this is it's like a race that you get to sit under if you watch it if you want to watch it um but i mean you have you have studied this course um actually uh just so you know trey with your elf eyes right now it is high noon so you do have light sensitivity so you have disadvantage on any of those perception checks uh, in direct sunlight. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but that is what your elf eyes see. A migraine. A migraine. Yeah, it's pretty much pretty much migraine and uh, splitting headaches. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as you uh, y'all y'all finish uh, mounting your skiff and um, Hilda, you you sit down in the in the helm itself, which is just a it's a simple chair. Um, it has a few. It has a few uh, crystals right at the palm. There's a there's a small headband that you uh, you know you, with practiced ease you've done this many times. You slide it into place and and adjust it so it fits just so right. And there's then a loop in my braids for it and everything. Yeah, <laughs> it ain't it ain't coming off for nothing. Um, but uh, now you can you can feel like almost like a, a light thrum of 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 activity from the ship just from being sat down, and so what uh, what do you uh, invest uh, spell wise to activate your your skiff? Well, this one's for all the marbles. I'm going to invest a second level spell. Okay, so as you close your eyes and focus your your internal energies. Uh, that flow from the the forges of creation itself, and uh, uh, the muse of production. Uh, you you feel that energy flow out from you through your hands in your headband, uh, and you feel your your focus kind of warp a bit and ex and expand. And when you open your eyes, uh, you no longer see in front of you the ship where you'll see like Elry getting his rope and and little little weighted balls together. Um, <laughs> 
sorry. Um, and in front of that, E404 at the main sail, uh, you know, making sure that it's it's loose, ready to go. And uh, up in front of that, you have uh, Dakul uh, getting the jib ready, uh, let, letting out some slack. And that's what you saw when you closed your eyes. When you open, you get, at first it's disorienting. It's almost like a fisheye view as you have become the ship. It is you, you are it. You are one in the same. You can feel, now you feel Dakul pulling the rope and you feel a tug at your shoulder and you feel Elri walking along your back almost. As everything about this, you can feel the water lapping up against your sides. Um, and as your the energy of your spell uh, suffuses the, the vessel itself, you can feel vibration and you lift up ever so slightly off the water into a, light, into a very low hover, about two feet off the water. And um, it's about that time that you hear from, from again, from the... Uh, uh, the walkway between uh, underneath the arch of Nero's gates you hear you know in a booming obviously magically enhanced uh, voice you know <laughs> racers places please the Nero's gate pursuit is about to commence <sighs> and there's just a roar from the crowd um, as all the ships begin to move up um, and line up uh, according to your placements, which y'all are, y'all are fifth, so you're basically back row on the left. Um, but all the ships come up. You have the elven ship with its with its green, almost leaf-like sails coming off. You see the the Magate Acadium ship is uh, is a is a finer make and actually looks like it has like maybe like a window through the bottom of it so they can see down um, underneath them. Um, again, your, your ship is a, is a mere, is a two sail ship. Um, and everybody gets into place. Your attention. And if I may present the ambassador to the first turning league for Nero's four, Zofia Sill and Everyone around Nero's Gate knows this knows this elf by name, if not by sight. She's been integral to the to the reintegration of humanity into uh, the, the cosmos at large. Uh, she was not a fan of the keeping humans out of out of the picture for so long. Um, and she walks up and she's holding a like a, a single large red rose in her hand, and she speaks out. Um, over the crowd as she raises a hand and everybody kind of hushes to everyone this is an auspicious day so without any further ado when this rose touches the water of Nero's Gates Harbor the race shall commence I wish you good fortune and good speed and may you all return today so we can see who shall take the dawn rose into the cosmos and you see her toss the rose out and it's falling and you can feel the anticipation build and as it splashes down in the water all the ships start lurching forward and now we will begin our skill challenge of the Nero's Gate pursuit so Elri who are you going to be assisting first Okay, so uh, as Elri grabs one of the uh, weighted silken ropes that he has dangling around, he begins to swing around and over the edge of the boat as he's riding like some type of pirate slash Tarzan. And as he's spinning around, he's yelling back to the crew, where do you need me? And he's, as he comes around the outside. Um, I'm assuming that this is maneuverability right here as we're all kind of congested. Yeah, you're um, you're all everybody's pretty pretty there's yeah, there's a glut of ships here. So you you have three ships adjacent to you. So that's you want to try to move forward. Yeah. Maneuverability is going to be key. Um he's on his way towards uh Dakul, but if you guys want to call him off somewhere else, he can swing to another line. Okay. So Emma, let's go ahead and get you a piling check. Dakul, you're making your maneuverability check. Uh with advantage as you're getting the help action from Elri and Kiana, you're you're on the main sail, assisting with uh, the general speed of the vessel. All right. So oh, that is a 19 for me. Okay. So 
The DC was 12, so you get a plus one there. So we'll remember that. It's an 11 for me. Okay. And that was with advantage, yes? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So you you do not get the maneuverability, but Emma, what was your piloting role? Uh, 23. 23? Okay. So that is a plus three. So y'all have a plus four speed. So the way this skill challenge is going to work, everyone, uh, out in chat land, is uh, every every time we have a check, that is adding to the speed of the vessel. Um, and whoever has the most speed at the end finishes the race first. So right now, y'all are starting with a speed of five, maneuverability of zero. So uh, based on those rolls... Okay, so... Y'all manage to, as you lurch forward and out of Nero's gate to, uh, to a raucous, to a roar of, of, of the crowd, um, the elven vessel who was already in the front just, just takes off. Uh, next to them, uh, Forester's Hollow, you know, they're, 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 they get going, but they are gnomes, so it takes them a while sometimes. Um, and so you manage to, uh, to bump the captain's vessel um, for the for the actual Narrows Gate Captain's Council uh, out of the way. So um, it's actually right now, y'all are in third place as you launch out into the harbor. Um, you have, you are behind the Elven vessel by three boat lengths, just so you know, they have about a three boat length lead. Uh, right behind them is, is the Magate Acadium vessel. Uh, there is no one adjacent to y'all currently. Um, there is all the other three uh, teams uh, rolled fairly shittily. So you managed to kind of bump past, like I said, bump past the captain's team. Forcers Hollow just couldn't get their shit together. The Magate Acadium launched over them and is in giving chase to the elven vessel. Um, and so we, uh, as you as you as you burst out, you're you're flying like over all these ships that are flooding out into the the harbor uh, in general, uh, because hey, this is this is what you do. You go out, you float in the harbor, and you watch a race all day take place over your head, and you come back into Nero's Gate and get drunk all night. Um, and so, uh, so you launch forward, um, and you're traveling at about. I mean, this is a good like. 80 miles an hour, you'd say. I mean, in, in, in our terms. So it's it's faster than any of you ever traveled, like even by if you've flown in a regular airship, which you probably haven't, because again, it's, that's kind of hard. Um, so that's, that's why a lot of people love uh, air skiffing, um, because you just get that rush. Um, and as you approach the second leg of the trip, uh, this is a, uh, this is, part of the course is where you will uh, have a steep rise in elevation, which is, which is actually meant to, uh, to kind of uh, call back to the original first flight of just taking off and taking towards the skies. Um, but it's also to clear the cliff side and then up and to get up even with the mountains that you're, you're kind of heading towards as you head at east out into the, uh, the harbor. Um, so again, you're, you are, uh, Two, uh, three boat links behind the elven vessel uh, with, with the Magate Acadium directly behind them. And there's three vessels behind you. Um, and so as you begin to rise, we're going to have the second roll for the skill challenge. Um, it's a little bit harder because you are uh, gaining elevation. So maintaining your speed is kind of difficult. Um, and you, you would know this. Uh, so it's a little harder to maintain speed, but again, there's no vessels around you. Um, so, Elry, what do you, uh, where are you gonna, who are you gonna assist with here? Well, during this entire process, as the boats have kind of been jockeying for position and then kind of falling in line and drafting and things of that nature, mm -hmm. the entire time Elry has kept swinging all around the masts and, and switching off to uh, the jib mast as he swings around on his collection of ropes that he has set up. And as he's swinging around, he turns back and looks with his top knot kind of blowing as he sees the three behind them. And he points back and looks down at E404 and he goes, see, 
three losers already. And as he swings around, he realizes that power is going to be necessary here. So he's heading towards E404, or if they call him off, he's going to the helm to help uh, Hilda. So okay. whichever you guys think. Yeah, E404 will take the help. <laughs> okay, yeah, so he swings sure. down and, and kind of wraps around and uh, helps with the mainsail. Okay, yeah, y'all y'all pull the mainsail to grab as much wind as possible. Um, so yeah, so uh, E four hundred four, you'll get to make this athletic check, athletics check with uh, advantage. Um, and so uh, this is going to be a little bit higher DC uh, for your athletics check, uh, Dakul. There's nobody around you, and you're not turning really. Um, you're doing a slight turn up. Um, so your 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 uh, maneuverability check is going to be pretty low. Um, but uh, everybody, go ahead and give me your rolls. All right, how does a uh, 23 sound? 23 sounds, sounds pretty good. Ooh, I'm a five. Goodness. Pruitt? Yeah. I rolled a natural one. You rolled a natural one. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So what is so that? So we uh, win right now. <laughs> so you win right now. Okay. So you rolled a natural one, but what is that? What does your roll give you? A uh, seven. Gives you a seven? Okay. Uh, now you're, but you invested a, a second level slot, so that's a plus two. Yeah, and it was you're... plus four to begin with. Oh, okay. I thought you were, I thought you were at plus five. Sorry. Mm. Um, okay. Well, you roll. So you got a seven. Okay. So you failed that. Uh, but the problem is, is you don't. Uh, you 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 kind of stutter and stall uh, as you as you begin to try to climb and gain altitude. Um, Interesting. Um, and it turns out, some trouble? Uh, you, well, you're having some trouble, but also the two, your two, uh, the two teams in front of you, the 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 mages and uh, the the FTL uh, ship, they appear to be having similar trouble. So you don't lose any uh, any ground on them, but you do hit a pocket of uh, turbulence. Turbulence. <laughs> So can I get? A, sorry, that was great. Y'all pulled that off excellently. So can I get a dexterity saving throw from everyone except for Hilda because she is basically strapped down into a chair? Uh, but uh, yeah, as y'all kind of rise and a crosswind hits your ship and Dakul isn't able to offset it and uh, it throws y'all. The the ship jolts just for a bit. Um, Sixteen. So 16? Uh, 13. 13? Yeah, 20. 20? Okay, you're good. So, uh, turns out E404, you're the only one that you, you basically just kind of get knocked over and you kind of hit the ground um, and, uh, you know, you just shake yourself. I mean, you are kind of, you do have a harness, so you're kind of strapped to the main sail, so you can't, like, fall off. But, you know, you are knocked prone. So, so you will need to uh, go ahead and write yourself before you can make another action. Um, and so, uh, as it stands, though, um, y'all are are still three boat links behind the elves, um, two behind the mages, but now the team from Forester's Hollow has slipped past you, and uh, uh, is now in third place, and the captain's team has slipped adjacent to you. And uh, the team from Lockport, the Browns, uh, are right behind you and dead last where they uh, usually are. Um, and you, uh, y'all, uh, you, you rise up to meet uh, the mountains and level off and you're heading towards Lakeside Rise. Um, and this is a, kind of a, a more dangerous part of the course as, as you're, you have to kind of jockey in between a few mountains, uh, make a pass through some ridges. Um, and so this is, this is generally the time. Um, and also, you know from just racing that there's not as many eyes here in the mountains as there is over the water. And so it is, there are many stories of some shady shit going on here. Um, so as you as you begin banking through the mountains, uh, let me know uh, what what do you what do you plan on doing here as you are now? You have ships on three sides of you, and um, you're going to be 
banking and moving, maneuvering pretty harshly. How, how close are the other ships to the, to the mountains? Is it, is it close enough that, that the, the running into the mountains could be a problem or, or are we all kind of far enough away that it's just more, more scenic than anything else? Uh, I mean, you know, there are times where you're, you're, you're clipping pretty, uh, pretty closely. Um, but, you know, the ships themselves are within, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet, depending as y'all, as you just kind of hover through. But it, it's one of those things, just like birds, like you want to fly close because you want to ride the wake of, of ships next to you. It allows you to fly faster, mm -hmm. um, you know, just like drafting and racing. Uh, so, you know, teams tend to try to bunch up and stay close, um, especially especially here where, you know, you're going to be sacrificing some speed for, for banking and um, and things of that sort. Well, with my cigarette in mouth, because I have yet to extinguish it, I'm going to look over to Eldred and say, I believe I could use some of your help with some of this, with some of this navigation through some of this treacherous area, please. He jumps Come up and grabs hold of the swing and he's on his way. Come in! <laughs> is, that, is that my only action to ask for help or, or can, I, can I have an, an action to go along with it? Oh no, you still have your action. Talking is a free action. Y'all just do. Yeah, I mean, again, this is spread out over, you know, we're just making a check for this general area, but uh, this is spread out over, you know. Okay, so so the elves are like three boat links ahead of us, so that's about 60 feet in front of us. Uh, and we're behind them, so uh, I want to take my bow out, especially if we're coming across an area where you can't really see us, mm -hmm. and aim for their rudder. You want and to take I would a like to hit it if it's if, if we're directly behind them. Are we are we directly directly behind them? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, in a sense, you're 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 all tra traveling through the same course. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, there are there are boundaries to the course itself, um, but but yes, you're 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 pretty much directly behind them for the most part. All right. Well, I definitely want to. I, I want to shoot at the rudder in a way that if if if. I am successful. Hopefully, it can steer them a little bit closer to the rocks. Maybe not crash. I don't know. May the yeah. gods bless my bow and my arrow. So you're gonna, you're, and so you're, you want to call El, uh, Elry over to uh, to handle maneuverability while yes. you're doing that? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll that roll that attack. Right, and it's only sixty feet. So with the long bow, it should be without disadvantage. Uh, 15 plus, oh, sorry, plus the two, I mean, plus the six. Oh, that's 21. 21 to hit? Okay. Yeah. You, uh, so as Elry swings around and grabs the jib, like, right as Dekul lets it go, not even looking, trusting his friend that, you know, that he's, he's going to be there to take the slack, he fluidly just pulls the bow out from, behind, from his, with your left hand, bow, arrow with your right, and just <laughs> fire it off, putting it away almost in one fluid motion. Yes. And, and you, your arrow flies in and hits their rudder immediately, um, and it is it is the effect is instantaneous as they lurch to the side. Um, and if everyone could, else could give me your your rolls, uh, so that we can reconcile this third part of the skill check. Can I do my thing, or did I have to spend an action to get up? <laughs> oh no, uh, yeah, you can you can do your uh, you can okay. do your speak roll. Yes. Okay, I'm glad. <laughs> And um, Pruitt, for uh, Elry, is this, this is acrobatics for the control, like, or dex, or what is this for the uh, jib? For the jib, uh, I mean, I, I would let you use, yeah, I would let you use acrobatics. I mean, you know, you're, you're a sailor, so you're all jumping. You're actually jumping and, like, using your weight on things, and, you know. So, yeah, you can do acrobatics. 24. Excellent. <laughs> I got and, a 22. And you got a 22 <laughs> speed. Okay. I was wondering if I could do a spell jamming maneuver, Pruitt. You want to do a spell jamming maneuver, Emma? I want to do a maneuver, Pruitt. Okay. Well, let's um, let's let's. What maneuver are you uh, are you doing? I want to close in on the leaders. So as okay, you are hitting them. We're going to zoom a little bit. Okay. And as you're doing that, um, <laughs> the team next to you, the captain's team, you see their rover pull out like a sack, and he lofts it and hits 
Yep. He hits the uh, the deck right in front of you and just flower plumes out and hits you right in the face. Like, just like, just now you have just flower like in your face. So. In my face. Uh, DM, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you I'm gonna uh, make your life interesting here for a second. Yeah, sure. Go for it. Uh, now, go ahead and tell me what you think about this. I have feather fall as a reaction, and uh-huh. if they threw something at us, I would like to have Elry cast feather fall on it so it'll stop its momentum and kind of suck it back behind us. I'll allow it. <laughs> so. Yeah, you see the rover like <laughs> he's like he's sitting there. He's looking. Everyone else is is they're doing their thing. He sees the cool shooting the bow. Nobody's nobody's protecting the captain, and he seems tosses that the the bag out, and you know, Elry, you 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 don't know what the hell's in that, but you just you just throw a spell out there, and it just kind of slows down and just gets caught. You know, now that it has no momentum from from the ship, it just disappears. And 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 the uh, the rover, uh, which is this this, it's the woman actually who jumped in the harbor, you know, and she's sitting there, hairs not 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 glistening anymore. It's kind of ratty and whatever. She's red haired. She's a very very attractive woman. She kind of looks at Elry and just kind of gives you like the biggest like, oh, you naughty boy, <laughs> oh. And, and what they would see is Elry wears rings all over each of his fingers. And as soon as he sees that coming through the air, he takes his thumb on his right hand and spins the ring finger around. And the rings are big enough where the bands open once twisted and a little feather comes out. And when he grabs it, he has his spell component and casts the feather fall. And as soon as she looks and gives him that that knowing or that, that, that distasteful look for having thwarted her fun, he gives her a wink and looks back and said, shouldn't have wasted all that time swimming! And he swings back around and gets on his way. <clears throat> yeah, Hilda <sighs> laughs and laughs and laughs and she might flip off a little dwarven bird and <laughs> we're gonna zoom right out of there, yes? Okay, and so what was your, well, uh, give me your roll. Oh, okay, let's see how we do. Don't let me down. I got a, that's not bad, 16 plus 6, 22. 22? Yeah. Okay. So you get plus 2. All right, so, yeah. So, the captain's team doesn't look so hot as, as you know, their, their, their rover, like, fucks up with her, with her, uh, her duties. And... You kind of just like give them a little chin music, basically, and they like they don't react too well to it at all, and kind of swerve out of the way. And you're able to kind of basically take their spot from them and zoom up past uh, Forster's Hollow and Bobo Lodel. And he looks over at y'all's y'all's crew as uh, as you're winding through these mountains, and you're able to you're able to bump up not only past him because uh, yeah, Kiana, you got a 22, right? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, yeah, you're able to actually bump up um, in front of the the Magate Acadium team. Now, the elves were uh, the elves managed to uh, navigate. Uh, oh wait, no, you hit them. Sorry, I did not roll theirs with uh, disadvantage. Okay, no, no, no. So you managed to move up right behind the elves as they are able to maintain their speed, but uh, uh, they aren't able to. Um, they aren't able to pull away from y'all. Um, so as you're as you're winding through the mountains and uh, begin heading back uh, uh, southwest, um, it's it's a fairly tight race uh, now with the elves, the y'all, the party, um, the mages right behind them, uh, Forcers Hollow, uh, the captain's council lost one, and now uh, uh, Lockport, uh, the mighty loggers. Uh, they're uh, they're actually moved up into fifth, so they're they're making a showing for themselves. Um, so you round through the mountains, uh, heading back over the water, and uh, it's 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 one of those things where when you come out of the mountains, everyone down down in the bay, it's it's there's a there's a roar as the ships peep peek over the cliffs and and begin to descend back down to uh, closer to uh, water level. Um, Sea level, excuse me, water level, um, and so 
you're 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 moving, you're jockeying for position. Um, and so when you do descend here though, you have to do it at a very steep angle because of the way the course is laid out. And this is one of those where you come off of a cliff and there's a there's a marker basically like a like a like a like a string of balloons almost between two ships that you're supposed to go under, right? And so this is one of those spots that, that usually claims uh, ships because they're not able to pull out in time um, as, uh, as you descend down towards the sea level. So uh, making this roll, um, you, you have a lot of speed on your side, but you got to make a pretty hard turn and then uh, level off and continue across the bay. So how would y'all like to proceed as you see... Um, well, how would you like? How would you like to proceed? Well, I do know we will need some maneuverability in order to get around these rocks and these falls. Elder, if you if you have the time with all of your swinging, please come help me yet again. All right, as <laughs> it kind of goes by once. Um, Pruitt, behind us, as everybody is kind of the the Acadium, the mm -hmm. Foresters follow, the loggers, they're all kind of bunched up, right, at this point yeah. as they're coming? Yeah, pretty much. Y'all are literally in a line of ships, like all heading down together. Um, there's no, there's not really any space in between each ship. It's a pretty, t okay. it's a pretty tight field. This is actually one of the, one of the tighter races of the uh, Nero's Gate Pursuit. Okay, so at this point, um, I have two things I can do. I can try to mess up the people behind us, or I can help with the maneuverability. What would you guys like to do? Hmm. I think maneuverability. I think so, because if we don't make that maneuver, we're a little screwed. <laughs> okay. I think if we so get yes. position first, we can worry about everything else second. Fine. <laughs> he swings down and helps with uh, maneuverability. Okay. So you swing down, you help with maneuverability. You're you're quickly approaching. Uh, you're quickly approaching the waters, and um, it's about this time um, you see one of the uh, the the elves um, look back. You know, as it looks at Dakul and give, gives you like a kind of a a sneering look as he orders the human, which the human on their vessel it looks like he was the he's the rover, and uh, the 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 guy on the jib he basically calls him over. It's like, you know, um, he says it in Elvin, but um, and as the as as the human takes takes the this excuse me the rope for the sail, you see him flick out. Uh, you see a, a, a glint of metal as he like flicks his hand back uh, towards your towards your ship. Um, it looks like he flicked a maybe a dagger to try to cut your line. Mm. Um, do you have uh, any kind of reaction that you would like? Yes. I have an yeah. auto reaction, which is uh, which is deflect missiles. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so it reduces damage, and if it uh, if it strikes successful, I can in turn throw it right back at him. Okay. But before I do that, I want to look over at my gnomish friends for that, for I feel a, a magnificent moment approaching, and I want to look at Babo Loro and give him a subtle wink. Annoying nod. Okay. Yeah, he's back there, like yelling at his crew, and he kind of like looks up and sees you looking at him, like, huh? And so the dagger comes, uh, comes racing in. Uh, so go ahead and give me your your roll to reduce the damage for it. Uh, seven plus the dexterity is four, so oh. it's, uh, it's eleven. Oh, plus my uh, proficiency bonus, so that's thirteen. Yeah. So, yeah, like he kind of like looks back and he, you see him, he's just going to like try to cut one of the, the line for the jib uh, mm -hmm. to throw you off right here, right before you, you have to level off. Maybe you go crashing right into the water and you just like, you don't even look, you're, you're sitting there leaning back. And as it comes arcing in, you're just like, and you just catch it right on the hill. Yes. All right. I want to redirect, I want to redirect the dagger. Which ship is closest to Bobo Lodo that might be giving them the most problems? Uh, well, uh, right now, uh, let's see. Right now, Bobo Lodo is two ship links behind you. Mm, so ships. right in front of them is the Magate Acadium ship. Okay. I would like to aim the dagger 
for the mast where the rope is, if it's possible, and mm-hmm. the gods are loving to hit that particular rope. With the uh, mast. On on what ship? The mages or the or the Forester's Hollow? Not the Forester's Hollow. I want to help the Forester's Hollow. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna the so the people right behind you, the Magate Acadium. Exactly, the Magate Acadium. After my knowing wink. Okay. So uh, give me a, go ahead and give me an attack roll on that. Eight plus the six equals the fourteen. Fourteen. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you you flick your dagger back, mm-hmm. and it like it hits the rope, but mm-hmm. it doesn't like cut the rope. Oh, it just kind of like awesome. bounces off of it, you know, and careens back behind, and actually kind of like goes right by Bobo Lodel's head, and he's like, mm-hmm. huh. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it was a it was a valiant effort. Okay. Um, so now that uh, we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get your uh, your rolls for this the the fourth part of the skill challenge, as we are halfway through the Nero's Gate pursuit with a tight field. Um, so uh, Trey, you're rolling with advantage, correct? Oh yes. I got a nineteen. <laughs> I got a twenty-five. Holy crap. No, excuse me. No, no, that is wrong. I'm correct. I got a 20. My strength is only a plus one. Please. I'm okay. Sorry. I hit a 20. <laughs> That's okay. And Hilda got an 18. Hilda got an 18. Okay. So, uh, y'all had plenty of speed. So, Kiana's DC was actually eight. So, you get a plus two speed. You're at a plus three maneuverability. Um, Okay, so as you approach sea level, uh, your ships like level off and the elves don't quite get it just right and you see the, 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 the tail, the rudder of their ship actually like hit the water and you're able to basically like hop right over them and you come right through the turn and you're like, you're like, Emma, you're, uh, Hilda, you feel like you are like inches off the water. Um, and you like, you perfectly like made that turn, and you have jumped into the lead, uh, going into this turn to uh, that stretches across the harbor and towards the Iron Woods. Um, the the Magate Acadium has uh, has moved up beside the Elven ship, and Bobo Lodel remains right on the tail of of both of those ships. Um, and the other two ships have fallen back. Uh, actually, hang on. I actually forgot to roll for. Yep. Okay. So, uh, Lockport, the law, lo- the fighting loggers. Well, they didn't do so hot there, and uh, their ship actually like hits flush on the keel in the water. Um, you don't know if they're out, but uh, they hit pretty hard. As y'all zoom across the uh, the harbor, um, and you don't see them immediately rejoin the field. Anyone looking back, and uh, uh, Hilda, if you turn your focus behind you, you know, and you see everyone jockeying for position behind you, there's only four ships now behind you, um, and so that's yeah. Um, so you're you're we are now zooming across the harbor, um, and uh, we're coming up on. Uh, the, the land mass there, which is, it's a it's a broken uh, cliffside. Um, trying to describe it. Imagine uh, y'all you know Avatar: The Last Airbender, the season finale, where Aang and them fight with all the pillars and everything. It mm-hmm. looks exactly like that, except a little bit more spaced out. Um, and this is this is again part of the part of the 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 Nero's Gate pursuit is kind of a walk down history uh and uh this is to remember the last uh orc incursion around the iron woods and the links that they had to go to to break the siege because this all used to be whole land um and after about a four month siege uh dwarves mined underneath the orc encampment and were able to locate a few natural gas pockets and detonate them and the explosion was seen miles away. It shattered every window in Nero's gate, um, but it reduced this section of the land to like rubble and pillars. Um, 
And so this part of the race is actually the most treacherous as there is a very specific path between these pillars that you must go. Um, and actually nearby Hilda is, is actually uh, pretty close by to this uh, location is where the mining occur, uh, expedition happened where you discovered E-404. So you're not actually far from uh, where she was, where uh, he, it was discovered, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, don't mean to label pronouns. Um, and so as you, as you move up, um, move up towards this, this uh, natural, or not a natural structure, but this uh, structure, um, we're gonna need uh, our, our uh, fifth check of the race. And it's very treacherous. Um, you're kind of, you're accelerating and rising up uh, to uh, once again, peak up on top of uh, and around the iron woods for the final turn, the final bend to the race. Um, so speed and maneuverability are equal uh, in, ne in necessity here. And you can see the, behind you um, the, the head of the, the, the FTL. Uh, it's a female elf with just the most pissed off look on her face that she's staring at the back of another ship. You can tell. Um, she is not used to seeing this. I mean, they were the heavy favorites uh, going into this race. So she's barking orders in Elvish. Um, and mostly barking them. Wait, uh, does anybody speak Elvish here? I do. It's actually, funny enough, E404 does. Oh, okay. Actually, no, no, I don't, actually. No, I don't. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. No, 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 no. <laughs> Somewhere in the programming, they learned Elvish. Right, right. Yeah, you you hear her, and she's mostly yelling at at the at their human teammate. You know, um, she doesn't seem like a very nice person. Um, <clears throat> so, what? Uh, uh, how would y'all like to uh, attack this part of the course? <laughs> oh, oh, this is hard. <laughs> um, how, how far are we from the from the finish line? Uh, you know that you know that you have to work your way up through this around the iron woods and then it's and once you come out of that turn it is a straight shot to Nero's gates um, where you know now you now as you're as you're coming up here you and look back you can see a lot of ships starting to move towards Nero's gates as everybody's starting to sail back in because they want to see the finale um, as the Sun has kind of moved across the sky and we're moving closer to uh, to evening um, it's actually a little bit easier for you to see now, uh, uh, Dakul, because mm -hmm. because of the, the the waning sunlight. But they're still it's they they basically want it designed so that you know hopefully the competitors are are flying through right at sunset and it's it's very very poetic and very epic. You know, these designers have gone through a lot, and so okay. How far away is the Elven ship? They are right on your tail. Like there is there's you know. Y'all, y'all have been able to to maintain your uh, to maintain your lead, and every time they try to jockey for position, you're able to just kind of flow right in front of them, and 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 because they don't want to get too far out, because then they would lose their their basically their drafting advantage, um, and so. I might have a trick up my sleeve for that. <laughs> yeah, E E four four said, the ship behind us is not happy with us. However, I think I am okay here. If you think that maybe maneuverability would be more beneficial. <laughs> Elry just, he's swinging around, almost licking his lips at the idea of messing with the elves behind them, but he's waiting for Hilda to give him the final say before he heads over towards uh, Dakul. Hilda's gonna say, Let's scare him, boys. <laughs> yes, I am all about the fear tactics. How can I help? Yes, well, I think we're gonna buzz him. <laughs> we're going to, um, so I have a maneuver I can do called a spell jam or buzz. Okay. Um, and the way I envision it happening here is that we essentially fake them out, make them think they're screwed. Um, and the function of the spell, if it succeeds, uh, 
the target creature or pilot must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or become frightened by your vehicle for 1d4 rounds. Um, so, if they're drafting us and they're scared, those seem mutually exclusive to me. Um, so that's what I think we should try to do. Okay. Uh, so as you, as you are, uh, so that's what you're, that's what you're doing. Okay. Uh, Elry, are you going to assist? Are you going to try to hinder them also? Um, I would like to assist and build off of that. And I want to use the narrative of the buzzing. Um, is there any way that there's two things that Elry could do? Could he swing over and throw a spell into the helm as well to kind of assist with the burst? Or could he um, kind of in conjunction, not a separate action, just kind of um, adding to the fear effect? Um, He has a bolo net contraption that he's going to catapult out off the back that will spin towards them. And as the air gets it, it kind of opens up and forms a net. And he was going to send it at their helm. Okay. So uh, I would say that you can either give uh, them a disadvantage on the save or on their piloting check. What would you guys like? I say dis on the save because that would be. Okay, so then he's going to do it more as a fear tactic as he swings as far out as his, I mean, he takes it to the very edge of his rope. So he's literally, if he let go, he'd be on their deck. So right. he comes out, he comes around the edge and he throws it out and casts catapult and it spins out like a buzzsaw towards the helm more for a fear effect. It's not going to hurt him if it hits, well, it'll hurt, but it won't, you know, yeah, conceivably. You're just, right. Yeah, you're just throwing some net at him. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so he spins by and screams as he kind of almost touches the tip of their, their their flag head or whatever will be coming off the ship as he laughs and then hilda can rock him okay. with the buzz <laughs> okay so hilda what's the dc on that uh wisdom save uh does that go off of me as caster or does it go off of the checks that i have where i've invested in the spell uh it goes off of you as the caster okay um then i believe it's i believe that's a dc 20. uh yes dc 12. Okay. Yeah. All right. You manage to, uh, yes, she is uh, fearful of you as you're basically you're you manage to like. It looks like you're you're trying to stay in front of the uh, the the mage's ship, and they try to make a move, and you rock right by them and swing right over the top of their sails, and Elry does his thing and is like right above her and throws a net down right in her face, and she just like jerks the ship to the side. Um, and so you said that that means that they are frightened? They are frightened for 1d4 rounds. Okay. Uh, do you want to go ahead and roll that? The d4? Yeah. Sure. It's your spell. Go ahead and let you roll the die. That's a two. All right. For two rounds. So for two rounds, they can she, they cannot uh, approach your ship or try to pass it. As she just kind of pulls back and just, you hear, you know, e44, you hear her say, wait, wait, no, there's something else here. Something else is at play. Um, and uh, pulls back. Uh, okay, so that is y'all's action. Now go ahead and give me your your rolls for the actual uh, maneuverability speed as you duck up between these nat- these formations of rock um, from the twisted remains. I got a fifteen, proof. I got a thirteen, and I got a fifteen. Okay. All right. So there's a bit of a shuffle here. Um, y'all did y'all did fairly well, Emma. You passed your piloting check, um, but you know the maybe it was the 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 violent nature of that maneuver that kind of threw you off a little bit as you as you entered this this particular part of the course. And it's you know it's it's. It, this is like even closer to the mountains. I mean, there's some of these where you almost see like, you feel like your sail like brush by rock. Like you can feel it um, as it zips by um, the, the change in air pressure. Um, you, manage, uh, you manage to hold off the elves, but uh, in this time, as you, as you come up out of this formation and you can see the iron woods on your left as you, as you crest uh, up on top of the land here, um, the both the 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 Mag- Acadium ship and 
uh, Bobo Lodal and the, the gnomes and humans of Forester's Hollow manage to pull even with your ship as you begin to ramp, make the ra- final bend around the, the Ironwoods. And it's a heated contest. And as, you know, as you're coming up around here uh, to cool, you can see Bobo Lodal looking over at you. And, you know, he just, you see him kind of giving you like, his eyebrows are raised and he's like, basically giving you like it's a now or never look. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the, the, the wizards of, uh, of the Magate Acadium, you can see their rover is just like throwing gusts of wind, uh, using magic to throw gusts of wind to fill their sails as they got them to at least get up even with you as you, uh, as you begin to wheel around the iron woods themselves. Um, and uh, what's everybody's passive perception? Uh, 14. 12. 13. 13. Okay, the cool. Uh, in the distance uh, to, the, uh, to the west, um, you know, you're coming around this corner and the sun's fading and so the, the light actually gets, you know, your eyes have now kind of balanced out and you, you have your, you know, that, that dark elf vision from, from one of your parents. Um, and in the distance, like, you know that there's a village off to the west as, you know, after, after the, uh, the Nero's gates um, flew for the first time 50 years ago, you know, uh, expansion of humans and, you know, new, new towns and villages. There's been an influx of new, new uh, people uh, immigrating here to Nero's Four. And there was a, a village that was uh, started not 10 years ago out to the west. And um, leaving the village, and it's a village that is not on the ocean. It's landlocked. It's, a, it's an agricultural uh, a village. You see a, a ship taking off. Um, from it, from the land, which is which is very odd. Not many ships can actually land on land, um, and it's it's of a very peculiar shape. It like it, you could swear it looks like a flying spider or some kind of insect, but the hairs on the back of your neck stand up as just the general shape uh, kind of awakens a, a, a you know an old phobia. Hmm. Okay. Uh, the first thing I want to do is bring it to Hilda's attention. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say, Hilda, do you see the strange creature taking off to the west? Uh, in, yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, as he yells that out, everyone on the ship can actually make a perception check. Um, or I see a strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hilda got a five, and she's like, I'm driving the ship to cool. Okay. Don't worry I, about it. I got 13. a 22. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and Elry? 13. 13. 13? Okay. Yeah, Elry's like, he's swinging around, and he's looking, and he's actually looking south, and he's like, I don't see shit, you know. Uh, 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 but, you know, uh, E404, you, like, turn, and your your eyes, like, turn and zoom in, and and you look at it uh and it distinctly looks like spider shaped and not only that like it's taking off and taking flight and looks like it's trying to get out of there pretty quickly um but there's also another smaller ship of the same configuration but just smaller and it's still on the ground um and you think you see uh like a like almost like a plume of flames and some smoke coming up uh, in the distance. Again, this is about, I don't know, a couple miles away, maybe. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But that, that's what you see. Um, I believe somebody is being maybe attacked. Um, yeah, evil first. It is hard to tell. There are things taking off and one ship staying there. This is pretty, is this like ahead on the course or is this like off course? Uh, well, you're about to make the turn to head back east. You're getting close to that. But right now, you're kind of coming up and, and brushing the tops of the trees. If you look on the map, you're brushing the tops of the trees of the Ironwood, still heading kind of uh, west, southwest, about to make that hard turn. And this is a little bit further west, uh, a couple of miles away. And it's uh, – so, yeah, that's uh, 
Okay, do, do I have any idea what these strange flying things could be? Uh, like, you could make me a history check or um, maybe an arcana. That's some, some ship knowledge. Is, is It could be ruled under arcana. Do you describe right. that to the, the rest of your crew? That Yeah. So as, as uh, they're thinking with an arcana, eh, that's not great. That's a, uh, well, I say that's not great. That's a 14. Um, as E4 said, there is a arachnid like shape ship taking off from land, which is odd. I am not sure what it is with a 14. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 know you've heard uh, you've you've seen you know you've you've assimilated files however you want to say it read whatever uh, you've heard of you know spider shaped ships you know the elves have like ships that look like plants and insects uh, but as you describe this anyone else who has either history or arcana can make a check um, as E four hundred four gives kind of a specific description. Um, uh, hearing arachnid, uh, Hilda uh, dials back through her brain and gets a 19 on an arcana check. That's okay. Where got. Okay, uh, Elry, you have heard tale of these types of ship. Emma, you have a fear that rushes back from over two and a half centuries ago of of these spider-like bodied but eel-headed creatures, these beasts that are, that are called Neogi. And they are a menace across the, uh, the cosmos as they are, they are slavers. They, they, they have, you know that they have uh, some kind of mental abilities to, to take over the minds of people sometimes. You've heard tale of them just having, having members uh, when, they take, when they take a town They'll sometimes have the head of the town taken over and kill all the other fighters just to show their their dominance. They they are detestable creatures. And you know from her description that looking over there is some version of a Neogi death spider. Um, a ship that is either some kind of warship or, you know, I mean, you're not sure you're a little bit too far away. <clears throat> her head but is like straight for it? Right now, technically, your head is straight for it. The, the next turn is coming up pretty quickly. Mm. But what you know, uh, you know, you know that the ship you're on is pretty fast. Um, and so... I will tell everybody, by the gods, do not let it touch us. That's all you need to know right now. That's terrifying. Hmm. Yeah, and for the first time, Elri actually sobers up a bit as he kind of regrips as he's swinging, and instead of the carefree attitude he had before, as the pirate's tales that have always filtered through any manner of sailing reach his ears and the thoughts of what this could possibly be, he focuses for once and falls quiet. Okay. They look like they need help. Should we forego the race and see what it is? I do not think we are prepared to deal with such threats. From what I understand, we should finish the race and perhaps seek professional help. They've already been attacked. It's too late. From what I remember. We have to run. Well, well you know that you know that they they like to take slaves and with uh you know with everyone filtering into nero's gates from all the surrounding communities you know there might have you know there might be some people left behind but it's a very skeleton um the population of the town um so i do not feel anybody sees this but us i think if there are survivors we could be their only hope. And as you look around, I mean, you see, uh, you look over uh, to your right where Boba Lodel is, uh, is piloting the, the Forrester's hollow ship. And to your left, the Magate Acadium. And you actually see like a similar debate taking place on the Magate Acadium ship. 
Um, and but Boba Lodal, he's looking over there, and he's actually like flying and like looking over at y'all ship and the mages, and he's his his vision is like sh- is straight ahead, as in he's it looks like he's focused on the race. Um, uh, do I still have a do I still have an action? Yeah, again, like this is we're, we're keeping this kind of loose, like you know this this all takes place over minutes, so. Um, Yes, I mean this whole conversation can be can be going on. Can I uh, can I do a spot check to see if, if we're on a racing skiff? I'm assuming that there's additional sails on the boat in case something happens to one of the main sails. You can put another one up. Is 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 that a safe assumption? Yeah, I mean there are other sails. Yeah, there sure. are other sails. Okay. Uh, for my action, I want to find one of those sails and tie a rope to an arrow. I think that's probably. I don't know if that's a full action or not. Uh, yeah, that would, I mean, yeah, that would be an action, you know, to start doing that. Yeah. That's what I would like to start doing. And we have one more turn coming up, right? Pruitt. So yeah, this is going to, you're, you're coming up to, uh, to the next turn, uh, that will be, you know, the next part of the skill challenge. So as soon as Elry would see that the cool has an idea, he swings down and takes the position like he did before at the jib to just help with the maneuverability around the corner for the next series of uh, mm-hmm. maneuvers. Okay. Yeah, if we're going to turn and get closer to it, and that's what Hilda's going to try to do. Uh, get closer to what? Uh, to the... Well, you said if we take the turn, then we're going to be right near the spider ship. Yes. Uh, well, no, no, you're not. You're about to turn, uh, if you look on the map there, you're about to kind of turn south and then back east. Um, but further southwest, you'd have to still go another like mile um, out of the out, off the course if you wanted to go uh, intervene in that. It's kind of in a low. There's like a low hill or uh, a lower part of the uh, terrain, um, like down a hill, and um, you know the, the the one that's in the sky is still rising up, and you know there is still the ship that is on the ground. Um, it being the right thing to do. But we also need to get the heck off this planet. E-404, what do you think? <coughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, God. Thanks. <laughs> E-404 kind of cocked, uh, cocked their head as you basically see the, the digital cogs in their head going. <laughs> Um, uh, and they say, I do not know how prepared we are to possibly confront these. I believe the cool is doing something to bring attention to them. Right. I agree. Hilda knows, we've all, we all know as we've done this before, if we get off the ship, Hilda cannot do anything. Um, well, no, 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 Emma. I, I did change that. You just lose the spell that you invested. You changed it? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I should have. I thought I brought that up earlier. I'm, that is my bad. Ah, ah. This because this is not. This is. This isn't a full spell jammer. This is okay. a skip, right? So. Okay. Cool. Um. Still, I think let's call attention if we can get a coordinated effort. Let's do it. Okay. This is dangerous. Uh, Hmm. Are, are we just about to go around the bend? Is that is that what's going on now? We're about to do our. I think so. Uh, yeah, I mean, if that if uh, so, you're going to continue on the race, yes? I think we are. Is that okay. what? Yeah, that's what the intention was. Correct. Is that cool? Uh, I I believe so. Okay. From, from my assumption, we are continuing on with the race. It's okay. Like, Oh, it's four boats side by side. It's, it's, that's what I'm seeing in my head. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, y'all are, y'all are, uh, I'm sorry, it's three boats side by side. The elves right behind you, and then the captain's ship right behind them. So you got the, you got the mages on your left, you got Forcer's Hollow on your right, and y'all are in the middle. So, you got a ship on each side. Uh, Nicole, you're, uh, are you, you're doing... Yeah, was that action for my last turn or was it for this turn? 
that was that was the last one. You were you were just doing that coming up towards the bend. So this is the actual action for the skill challenge. Right. So if we are if we are still racing, and Dakula knows that this is still a race, but he is troubled because he does see action ahead. He calculates in his head. He said, if we do not win this race ourselves, then we should make sure. Then I should make sure that the man that can help me may be able to win. As he's stitching his ropes together to the to this arrow for one shot, the the rope is attached to the to the backup sail that we have, and he aims his bow at the left side at the Madge Eight boat. Since it's a three, just three people going side by side, mm -hmm. he pulls true and aims the arrow at the hull of the boat, hoping to snag it and dragging the sail behind them to create an additional drag to slow the other boats down. Like a parachute, kind yes, of. Yes, like a parachute. Awesome. All right. Uh, oh, so you go ahead and make that roll, make that attack. Ha <laughs> Nineteen plus the. Okay. Oh, that, you don't even need to. Yeah. So yeah. So Dakul like pulls the thing and 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 fires off an arrow and and tags the uh, the Magate Acadian boat and it. I mean, it lurches like almost like they hit the brakes almost. Um, like meanwhile, like none of them saw it coming because like again they were kind of having the same debate you know through the wind whipping you couldn't make out every word but you heard some of the same words that were on this like you can help them being attacked you know and um and so arrow fires off sail expands catches the wind it starts to bring them back um go ahead and uh make y'all's uh skill challenge rolls uh for this next turn. This is a pretty hard banking turn. Like you're doing like a kind of a 270 degree turn almost. So it's gonna be pretty hard on you there, uh, Elry. Uh, so you gotta lean hard into that jib and... Uh... Uh, 14. Okay. 18. Uh, that was a 11. An 11? Okay. 23 for Hilda. 23. Okay. Was I supposed to roll on that one, Pruitt? Because I didn't know if the cool was doing his oh. action at this time, or if not, then I will gladly step back and allow him to. Well, no, no. Unfortunately, the cool his action was to impede okay. the uh, the Magate ship, and you were taking. I understood you were taking the jib from him. So right, right. Yeah. So um, in that case. Yep, the Magate ship uh, lurches behind, but y'all don't make the turn really well, and actually it ends up where they kind of bump into you, and, and y'all kind of slide off a little bit. Uh, the Forster's Hollow ship and Bobo Lodel actually uh, um, pulls ahead, and they make the turn. They don't make it great. They, they do good enough to get through the turn and to stay in the lead. And actually, uh, the captain ship is able to um, to leap past both of y'all uh, because you don't make a lot of good progress, um, and and so as you make the turn, um, you start to continue around the forest, and you actually see, uh, yeah, you see the Magate Acadium ship like turn. And like it looks like they're heading towards uh, mm. towards that village, as uh, as you look back and you see them as you know as this move that Dakul pulled like knock them back into last. Um, there's kind of a a yell of just like oh we're doing it, and they you see them kind of break off and start heading back towards that village as y'all begin speeding uh, along the forest. They see what we see. We should help. Yeah, we should help. As he swings by, and for the first time, you might see just a touch of fear in Elry's face as he swings by. Hilda says it might not be much help, but sometimes you have to try. And uh, E4 says, if there are two shifts, our chances of helping increase Exponentially. So, I'm guessing we're all just gonna, all right, let's just go. <laughs> and help is what's happening. Okay. 
So y'all y'all are breaking off and uh, and following the Magate Acadium ship uh, to pursue this ship that is taking off from uh, a village. Okay, so uh, as you uh, as you close in, um, you know they 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 have gone over and you saw the rover like cast a spell and knock the arrow off and knock the sail goes fluttering past you as you're as you're pulling up behind them. And you, um, as you are pulling up, you begin pulling up next to them, and um, like the the head, uh, the guy that is uh, piloting their ship, um, you might know him. He's 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 well known. He's not he's liked by some, not by all. Um, he's one of the uh, one of the head students at uh, at the Magate Acadium, and he's also the son of like of the Magate's head Magus. Um, excuse me, head Magus. Um, and so people kind of see him as, as a bit of a, you know, he, he lucked into this and, uh, but you see him like, look over at you and give you like a nod of, of, of approval and of camaraderie and then just kind of focuses back forward. And his, his, his compatriots are, you know, you have the one casting spells, throwing gusts into the, into the sails. Um, and as you're approaching the ship, you're, you're getting within about a quarter of a mile of it, and you see that it begins to vibrate and shake as it's taking off. Um, and, uh, but knowing what you know about like seeing the other ship leaving uh, atmosphere and how fast these skiffs are, you think that you can probably catch it. Like even, even at this distance, about a quarter of a mile out, um, you think you might be able to catch it. Um, and now that you're a little bit closer, you can see on the back of it, kind of the like the body of the ship as it has its like three legs that kind of prong down into landing gear. As it takes off, two of them kind of fold up, and you see like sails forming that look like spider web, um, like made of like the sheerest silk, um, catching air with the two front legs that are that are pointed up, and the 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 back of the ship itself, kind of the the, the body of the spider is open air and you see a few people uh walking around like humanoids like walking around looks like they're like stowing gear or something or like tying off ropes um uh but that's that's all you really see uh as you're as you're approaching um and so uh now we will roll initiative so uh, it's for the ship itself, uh, if y'all would prefer, we can keep it to ship initiative. That way y'all can all kind of coordinate your actions and go, you know, however you would like to on your ship. Um, and so if that's the case, then it would be whoever's helming the ship, you would use their initiative modifier. And it's instead of modified by your decks, it's modified by your casting ability, whatever that is. Okay. Yeah, let's go ship so we can You're stay. Muted, muted, Emma. Welcome to welcome to gaming on the internet. You have now had your first muted talk. I can't just talk to you. I, I do it every single week, so don't feel <laughs> no, bad at all. You, um, <laughs> Somebody cast silence. Um, um, in that case, then our initiative is plus two. Okay, so go ahead and roll that four. Roll. All right. Uh, we got an eight. Got an eight. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so uh, it looks like uh, as you're as you're moving in. Y'all kind of take uh, take the lead, so to speak, um, and you're moving up towards this ship as they as they begin to gain altitude, and it looks like like you have been spotted. Like you hear like see someone pointing in the distance, and uh, there's some some shouting that you you can't really make out, but y you can tell that they're they're shouting and there's oh, oh you know some noise, but no no distinct words, and um, it looks like they're pulling up like you're not sure what it is but they're long and it looks like there's a point at the end of it it might be some form of harpoon or ballista you're not sure but it looks like they're pulling and mounting them on the back of the the ship uh it looks like they're mounting two of them um and that's what they're doing uh with their action now it is y'all's turn and i'm just gonna say right now you're about you're probably about uh, close to f about 500 feet away from them, and uh, you'll be able to you'll be able to move in um, in another uh, 
round or two. You're not you're not really sure which. You you, um, you think you can close the distance as you uh, um, begin moving up, and the the mages actually one of them flings a flings a spell uh, and it it kind of goes wide um, as a like a bolt of of fire just kind of streaks past. I mean, it was just a shot in the dark, really at at best. Um, with so much for a surprise attack. <laughs> uh, uh, Pruitt, can I check and see if those are indeed ballista that they are arming to fire on us? Yeah, you can go ahead and make a vehicle uh, a vehicle check uh, with your knowledge of sailing and vessels thereof. How's a nine? Does a nine look a good? A nine? Uh, it's uh, it's really popular on another live play channel, but um, it's... It's... Uh, <laughs> it's you know, you're like, yeah, they're mounting some kind of weapon, you know, basically. Right. It's some kind of weapon, sure. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, uh, is anyone else doing anything uh, on your turn to uh, aid the ship or take a shot or anything? Are we within uh, 90 feet? Not yet. Uh, it'll be another round or two, depending on uh, your, okay. your next. And actually, I'm sorry, Emma, you need to make a piloting roll. Uh, I do. And when I do that piloting roll, I want to do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll? Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All right. um, so hopefully if they do shoot whatever that thingy is, um, it maybe won't hit us. Maybe. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that the one that gives disadvantage? Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, but I also rolled an eight. So. Rolled an eight. Okay, you try to do a barrel roll, and you know you're 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 so concentrated on like speed, you don't really get it over in time, and you kind of have to just duck back down. Um, and let's see, that's them, and that is you. Okay. So, yes, as you're closing in. Um, sure enough, you, you, you don't hear it, but you see, like, two, like, not really sure what they are, if they're javelins, harpoons, spears, long and pointy, and they're coming right at you. Um, one slams into, um, so one slams into, uh, the, the rover of the Magate Acadium ship, and, um, he, he, uh, he goes flying off the back of the of the skiff, like just, and he's just gone, just like that. Um, the other one, uh, s the one aiming towards y'all, slams into the front of your hull, like right next to Doc Cool's uh, leg, um, but it it just hits the hull itself, um, and and uh, actually Emma, let's see. Yeah, Emma. I need you to make a. Uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw because that is your casting stat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw uh, for taking that damage in order to, because you are the ship, right? So mm -hmm. technically, you kind of took damage. Yes. Okay. Wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. That's a seventeen. 17 okay you're able to maintain uh, control of the ship and you don't you, you know it, it hurts and you actually take uh, you took half damage from that so you only take eight psychic damage um, as, as this as this and now that you look at it it is it is definitely uh, some type of harpoon but it almost looks like if you took a spider's leg and you could actually see all the jagged hairs and everything it's it's just looks wicked um, um, about maybe like four feet long um, and kind of serrated and it just goes like right through and it's it's nasty it it splinters the wood apart um, if that hits someone it you know it's it's not gonna be pretty uh, but you manage to maintain control of your vessel um, <clears throat> and so that is their turn now it is now it is your go and then it'll be the Magate Acadium crew so uh, here, just like in the skill challenge, if y'all want to assist with like speed or whatever, you can. Uh, uh, you as you now close to within, um, you close to within uh, 150 feet. Um, All right. 
hmm. speed, right? We we need to get we need to get into this thing because it's going to pick us apart if we stay out here. Yeah, I agree. So with my action, I look at the look at the damage that this harpoon has caused. And I know that we cannot take another one of those. And I grab my longbow. And with my elven eyes, I try to see if I can make out who is the person that is shooting this treacherous weapon at us. And I take aim and fire with my longbow. Okay. Is that now? Is that within your normal range, or is that at long range? No, this is this is within long range. If it's right at 150, so I shouldn't be shooting with, with disadvantage. Okay. Cool. Not be shooting with a disadvantage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and take your shot. Oh, and I would like to add uh, the additional uh, bonus, if, if it hits, let me see the shot, see if it hits. Ah, an eight plus the six, so that's 14. 14, okay, yeah. Uh, at, at this distance, because they are behind kind of the railing, so it gives them some cover. Um, it your, your arrow kind of streaks and it looks like it's going right at them and it just like thunks into the side of the boat right below uh it would have hit him like right in the stomach mm. but because he's behind the 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 the, the hull of the, the ship and and this weapon that he's currently reloading and it like thuds in and brrr, and he kind of like snaps up and looks at you and like you know you see like his eyes go wide with fear and he's shakily and it looks like he uh he actually yeah, it looks like he actually like drops the harpoon and it falls out the like off the back of the ship, and he's going to get another one as one of the one of the other um, of the crew. And again, these are humanoids. Now that you're closer, you can tell like these look like humans, and maybe some other races. Um, uh, you know, not maybe like half elf, or you're not sure if there's a dwarf there, um, but they are definitely humanoid. Um, and so there's that. Uh, but yes, you, you, you actually cause him to drop his harpoon and he's like reaching for another one as he's being berated. Um, um, you're continuing to rise through the air uh, and go ahead and give me your, your rolls for, uh, for speed here as you're closing in. Um, and Elry will help E404 if that's okay. Uh, okay. Giving... All right, so you're rolling with advantage, E. That's an 18. <laughs> okay. Um, I would like to perform, and I hate the name of this, a scissor maneuver. <laughs> okay. Um, which essentially will take us, assuming, assuming this, this ship is, is not super larger than us yet. Uh, I mean, it, it is a larger ship than you, yes. Is it large, too large to be able to switch sides of it? Well, I mean, you can you can kind of just like switch on the other side of it. Yes, yeah. I mean, you're you're a lot more maneuverable uh, than it is. So yes, I would say that you you could do that. Sure. Okay, cool. Then we're going to perform a scissor maneuver, and go to the <laughs> other side of the ship. That's never going to get old, you guys. I mean, I'm phys I'm taking psychic damage from not saying every pun coming into my head right now. I know it's hard for you. <laughs> um, uh, and we got a seventeen. Okay, so uh, and what what else does that uh, what else does that provide you? Um, it gives us so we're on the opposite side, uh, and oh, a member of your vehicle's crew may make an attack on that vehicle as you pass. Okay, yeah. So you're just kind of like like crossing over, uh, like back and forth, and so uh, whoever you designate can make can make an attack because I believe that's you can make a free attack like kind of as a reaction. Okay, uh, then to cool, take another shot. Absolutely. How, how far are we from the deck? Uh, from the deck now, you're oh. you're about a hundred feet as you're as you're closing in. Next round, you'll be you'll be like right up on it. Um, right. Second chances. This is a sign from the gods. Pull my longbow, kiss the arrow. One good time for luck. Pull the string back and fire. 12, that makes 18. 18, uh, yes, so that just gets over his, are you, sh are you firing at the same guy who had dropped it and he's now starting over oh, the reloading process? Yes. Or are you aiming at someone else? The, the first guy that I see loading the heart of poems is the one that will feel the fury. Okay, um, 
All right. So yeah, this guy who he'd already dropped one and he's picking up another one. Uh, and he comes up like to, to feed it into the front, uh, uh, to load it into the front and uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. All right. Hold on. So sorry. <laughs> My dice are spread everywhere. <laughs> and you, did you say you were doing a Kinsai shot last yes. time? Right? Okay. Well, shots for 1d4 extra damage. Okay, yeah, so that's still, I would say that still applies since it's basically in the same round. Um, so the first one is an 8, and the d4 is a 2. Okay, ten so total. that's, so 10 total? 10 total. Okay, yeah, you, uh, your arrow streaks in, and like I said, he had just reached down to pick up another harpoon, comes up, and it... <laughs> catches him like right in the upper chest and he goes sprawling back uh clutching at this arrow and just screams in agony like he's like oh my god what the fuck Ah!" you know i mean you can like hear this from like that far away um and you know the the guy in the back who was berating 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 him for for dropping the harpoon in the first place is yells is like take the harpoon shoot him shoot them just kind of very like monotone and 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 droning almost mm. um and so you did your move you yes. did your thing you shot your thing the magnetic cadium goes uh they uh burst forward um uh let's see and they fire uh, a couple of them actually fire uh uh fire bolts and one strikes the side of the hull and and just kind of extinguishes and the other goes wide again and uh, their 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 uh, you know their their skiff captain uh, his name's Xander by the way you, you would know that his name's Xander Sarone he kind of barks at him he's like focus remember your training you can do this you know and they're they're sitting there like I mean you, you look the the crew they're all like like second third year and he's like eighth year you know mm-hmm. and so you know they're 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 kind of rattled uh, but you know they're they're still trying to do their job. <laughs> Um, as, as he's not, hasn't moved up as close, uh, as you did since you, uh, you pulled the nifty maneuver and everything, and they're focusing on, like, firing as they're moving in. Uh, they were trying to, t- trying to, to harry the other, uh, harpoonist. Harpooner? Harpoonist? Uh, ah, whatever. Um, and so, man, eh, uh, so, uh, they, they, they continue moving up, but again, they're, they're a little bit further back than you. Um, so, since, since you took, you took out, out the one harpoon guy, uh, that one does not get reloaded in time. Um, and you kind of flipped over to the other side, and the other is reloaded and takes a shot at the Magate Acadium. Um, it's about this time, and it strikes true, so does it. Okay, so the, uh, the student in the front that just took a shot uh, gets caught in the leg with a harpoon and screams in agony as as i mean you hear it the 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 wet splash of blood and because this thing again is it's nasty it almost goes all the way through um his leg um i'm sorry her leg my bad uh i had to check my name list here um and so she screams in agony and drops to the deck um as as the 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 dwarf uh who is over there who's out casting spells with her uh kind of drops down to her side and you hear xander like no stay and like like you know stay on point um and so uh it is now uh your turn and it's about this time like i said as you are moving up um in the atmosphere like your ears start to pop and like the air like uh, Hilda, you can kind of feel like the resistance on the ship is lessening a little bit. Um, just a little. But it's just something worth noting. As, as a pilot, you know that, you know, you can take these things pretty high, but not, not too terribly high. Uh, well, it's the coming back part, really. It's the falling. <laughs> Pruitt, can we see the, the helms person on the spider craft? Uh, no, as you as you get closer, again, this is kind of like the the rear bulb of the ship that is just kind of open, but you can see a door on the on the flat side moving up towards the front, towards the head of the ship, uh, that is closed, uh, and all you can kind of see is the open deck on the back here. 
Um, and, you know, there's there's various lines strewn about, uh, some going up to the sails that are attached to the legs far overhead. But it's a pretty open air deck, uh, and you get a better view now. And there's uh, there's the one guy on the ground with the arrow in his chest, and then it looks like there's about uh, five or six others kind of moving about um, and and uh, trying to move to the to the harpoons and reload them. And some of them are now grabbing like weapons and and uh, and crossbows as y'all approach. <laughs> and so it is now uh, it is now your turn. And w- in this round, you can. Uh, basically pull alongside however you however you want to do that you will be able to overtake the vessel this round with whatever action you take let's get on board yeah e four is no help at range here so <laughs> um he provide elry swings down and takes one of his uh um, all of a sudden, an invisible hand appears and pulls another one of his lines down into play, and he wraps two of them around the arms or under the armpits of E404, and he gets on top in the, his his master blaster type of uh, riding E404, and as soon as it pitches and he can swing out master blaster style with E404, he wants to hit the deck with, if that's okay. I fucking love this. <laughs> that, is, that is so okay that I, I don't know how, how to describe how okay that is. Um, yes. While they're, while they're swinging over, he gets ready to release the, the, the silk ropes that he has tied loosely around the sides to kind of send EO, E404 as like a missile towards the deck. Um, he does that same pat on the top of E404's head, and he goes, go get him. I'm going to drive this thing. <laughs> Oh, this is great! This is great! Uh, yeah, so do we do we get onto the ship for it? Uh, yeah, so so correct me if I'm wrong, but you're you're gonna try to like sling her, like as as our ship banks and the rigging would have us kind of like a swing, swing out. just of course. We're gonna swing over when we hit the apex. I'm gonna release the knots and send us. Gotcha. As, Okay, so go ahead and you give me an athletic, or I'm sorry, an acrobatics check, um, Elry, as you're kind of like hanging onto the rope and and swinging and letting momentum do its job. And how's a twenty three strike you? A twenty three uh, strikes me as as something uh, something out of of in, insert pirate movie here. I mean, you just like <laughs> run up, grab her, the boat tips. And you just kind of pendulum out across the expanse, and you look down, and y'all are a few more than a few thousand feet in the air, and you look down at like nothingness, um, and just land, and you're getting out over the ocean now as you're as you're kind of heading west, um, and you manage to get right over the the uh, the edge uh, of the uh, of the edge of the ship and uh, land on the uh, on the deck without, I mean, like. Uh, Eve, uh, go ahead and give me a, uh, uh, just go and give me an athletics check to, to check your landing, at least. How about a nat 20 for that superhero landing through it? Yes! Okay, so you <laughs> pendulum them out and just, and just stand up, you know, servos whirling and just, yes. and like, the people around you, like, look at you wide-eyed and just like, terrified and go ahead and um now that you're both on deck um and uh to cool uh i'm sorry let's go ahead and finish the the movement before i describe uh to cool what are you what are your plans here and mo and hilda what are you uh what are you going to do as they're doing this i'm going to look back at hilda oh my uh can you hear me yep. okay okay i'm going to look back at hilda oh. I'm so tired of Erwi always having all of the fun. It's time for us to jump in, shall we? I want to offer my hand and uh, let's get to kicking some butt. If you want to. <laughs> Interesting. As pilot, what's going to happen to the ship if I disengage? If you like, just get out of the seat and run off. Um, yeah. I mean, you would have about a second as it, its momentum is going to carry it forward. I mean, you're kind of like next to the ship right now, but it would just kind of tip back and 
fall to the earth. Mm. Oh, can I change my action? It's too late. I can't change my action. Ah. Well, I mean, all you, all, you, all, you, yeah. all you said is you offered a hand to, mm. so she doesn't right. have to take it. I, mean, well, I have an action then. Yeah, no, I mean, this is all part of kind of your move. Right. So, right. All right. So in that same, in that same, when I offer my hand, I want to look over to the rigging of both of our ships and figure and the, I'm not a sailor, so I don't know the term. When you get the rope and tie it around the sides of the, of the, of the knots, mm -hmm. can I tie our ship to theirs so that it doesn't move? Oh, okay. So you, oh, okay. So you want to moor your ship to their ship right. and try to keep moor it there? Our ship to their ship and just leave it there. That, yeah, I think that's, that's my the term. Next question. Um, yeah. Ye, I use uh, that as a term. I use that you, as a term. Yeah, you, like, if you did that, I mean, it would stay there as long as Hilda stayed at the helm. Mm -hmm. It would kind of anchor it, so mm -hmm. to speak, but she would still need to power it, because the second she quit mm -hmm. powering the ship itself, I mean, it's yeah. still a skiff, and it weighs however much it weighs, and it would just rip the rope away. I uh, understand. Okay. All right. Well, then, <laughs> keep it running for me. <laughs> You go get him, everybody, and you come back. Yes. Here for you. Okay. So, Hilda, you're going to stay on the on the skiff and just kind of keep it there? I'm going to try to make life hard for them. Okay. Yes. Uh, for the for the ship, for its ship? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, okay, so... Where's my goddamn air support? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's coming, Mal. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so yes, so you, cool. You jump onto the ship. Go ahead and give me a go ahead and give me a acrobatics or athletics, whichever one you want there, just for to check for the landing as these two craft are both kind of. Okay. Let's see, plus four on dexterity, so that makes that seventeen. Yes, seventeen. Yeah, you just pop and pop a ninja roll and pop right up. You know, however, whatever pose you want to strike. Um, but yeah, you do it. You do it with the fluidity of a master. Yes. And uh. so. Y'all, 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 both, y'all, all of you get on the ship now, mm -hmm. and you look around, and like I said, there's about six guys left. There's the guy on the ground; he's clutching at an arrow, like, oh god. <sighs> um, in the distance, uh, closer to the the door at the back is the 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 guy who is kind of droning orders at everyone, and you see him, and he's uh, rather a more stout human. Um, all these guys are in kind of grubby sailor slash pirate garb. Um, they don't look very well uh, bathed. Uh, they're dirty, nasty, uh, slightly emaciated a little bit. Um, go ahead and give me um, either perception or insight, whichever one you prefer. All of us, or yeah, who? Yeah, whoever's. On, I'm sorry, whoever's on deck. Sorry. So not, so not everyone, everyone but Hilda. Everyone but Hilda. Uh, my perception is fourteen. Uh, 16 on perception. Okay. Yeah, you, uh, uh, 14, yeah, you, you kind of all notice that, uh, uh, they're cool. You know, you notice these guys are grubby, uh, you know, but that's, that's sailors, right? That's pirates, that's sailors, that's nothing new. You've, you've seen them come and go. Um, but with, uh, E44's, uh, perception there, she kind of zooms in and notices, like, most of these guys are pretty emaciated kind of sunken their eyes are sunken a little bit their cheekbones are protruding slightly uh you know as in like these guys haven't been well fed and like even the guys on deck you know you see them like they're holding like short swords or some of them are trying to load crossbows right now um the five uh the like i said the 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 more stout human is in the back and he's just kind of standing there like stone-faced and he's just like fight them take them out now um and the 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 other five uh are they're all doing this and with shaking hands um and and you know without without much um exuberance to do this task um so uh e44 you just you just moved like elry he kind of did a whole thing with his action and did a movement you only moved this round and to cool you only moved so you still have your action and react and bonus action whatever you would like to do with that oh it's on me uh bo both of you because remember we're all we're like y'all y'all go and then the mages go and then the ship goes so it's we're just kind of keeping it loose loose group initiative okay yeah. so uh you basically, uh, E-404 does the quick head scan and says, um, I do not believe these five are the problem. 
that one is giving orders they do not want to follow, we should eliminate the problem. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm just imagining the Terminator screen of just <laughs> like target assessment, target assessment, <laughs> outlining everyone. Oh God, anyway, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to break the moment. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but do you, uh, do you do anything, uh, with your, your actions? I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> E44 is going to wait to see what, what the cool does before they do anything. Okay. So the cool, you got, you still have your action and your bonus. You've already used your movement up. Nice. Ah. And there's no one within, uh, melee, just so you know, like you're still about, 10 feet away from the nearest sailor who's who's currently trying to like look at you while considering reloading the harpoon to shoot um okay um yes i did notice that they are paying attention to the man over to off in the distance i was put a solve to this problem pull my longbow out pull the fletching out pull back kiss the arrow yet again for luck and I let it loose. Okay. An 11 right. plus, plus my six, so that's seven, um, excuse me, yeah, 17. 17? Yes. Uh, 17 does hit. Uh, this guy is not wearing armor. You know, he's like, a, again, he's dressed in the same kind of ratty rags that all the other guys are. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, your your arrow uh, flies true and, uh, and strikes him. Oh God. But he's he's far from dead, right? Oh, well, not... how much how much damage you do? Oh, it would help if I did my damage. Two and two is four. And go uh, go. Be sure to. That was for the bonus. Yeah. Yeah. So two for the eight, and then the bonus die was two. Okay, and don't forget your dexterity modifier to damage also. Oh, yeah, that's four. So that makes up um, um, twelve. So eight. eight? Four and four is eight. I can't okay. math today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you 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 loose an arrow and it strikes him low in the abdomen, and he just kind of like, <clears throat> and just lets out a solid, <clears throat> and then stands back up. You know, and he's just like kind of clutching the arrow, uh, but he's not giving it any real mind, and he's still like pointing at y'all like to attack. Um, and now it is uh, the mage's turn. Oh, I haven't gone yet. Oh, I'm sorry. My I bad. My bad. You're, you're no worries. Right. How far yeah. away is this guy? <laughs> uh, this guy from y'all, he's about, uh, I would say, like 20, 25 feet. 25 oh. feet. Okay. Um, so E404 starts walking forward. And they they are doing calculations in their head. And they're, they're perceiving that this is a danger. And... As calculations are happening, um, the cool will see smoke starting to come out from one of the uh, ears as suddenly their eyes start glowing a very bright red. Um, and even the, their exterior starts to glow red with heat as some cold seems to take over. As E44 stops walking like you know, more casually and just gunning for it for this guy. And you watch as uh, their right arm shift and transforms into a giant warhammer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the rage, uh, I am activating um, my aura of fire. Mm -hmm. And they are going to raise up and just smack this guy. So, that is, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, that is a 19 to hit. Uh, uh, 19 hits him. Okay. Uh, so first he takes two points of fire damage because he is within my aura. Hmm? Um, as the heat rating off, rating off of E4 for damages him. Uh, and let's say, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, 12 points of damage. Okay. Um, okay. So, as you walk forward, and heat starts to shimmer and kind of warp the air around you, and like kind of a mirage effect, and steam starts coming off. Um, first things first, the guy you walk next to on the ground who took the arrow, 
like he's laying on his side and you walk right by him and you, uh, Dakul, you, you see this, maybe E, you don't, you're just, you're, because you're, like you said, you're focused on this guy. Dakul, you see this guy, his face just starts to, like, burn and sizzle uh, as the heat radiating off. And what's the range on your? Um, I have a 10-foot radius. 10-foot radius, yeah, okay. So, yes, you walk right by this guy. He's the only one you walk by on, on path to this, this, this main guy. Mm. And you see him, he's clutching this arrow, looking up and his face just begins to burn and he just ah! and his I mean his eyes almost melt out of their sockets as he goes quiet and still on the on the deck um, and then you walk up to this guy and he's just like stone faced just non-responsive holding this arrow in his stomach with his hand out and you watch like his fingers start to sizzle and boil and you bring your war hammer up and how do you want to do this Yes! <laughs> um, so, E44 is not thinking like they normally do. This is something else as they just raise up the Warhammer and just to the side of the head uh, as hard as you can, just feeling that crack mm -hmm. of the metal. Yeah, so you, you just come straight across his temple and like his head just kind of goes sideways as there's a sharp snap of his neck and his head just stays there and he just tips over. Um, and uh, E-404, like, does the unnaturally, like, too much head turn towards like, to cool. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah like, that, like an owl, like just turn yeah. your head all yeah, the basically. way around on your body. Yeah. And E-404 in, like, bright red eyes just says, Problem eliminated. <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> there's that. Uh, anyway, um, so then the, uh, the, the Magate Acadium ship uh, pulls up uh, alongside and... Um, yeah, so the dwarf uh, that was still there, you hear Xander like, get on, help them! And he he jumps out. Uh, he's not as graceful as Dakul was. He does get on deck and he lands, but he kind of lands in a heap. Um, and he's like, ah, my knee, my damn trick knee! Um, and uh, and so he's going to have to to basically spend the rest of his action like getting up and standing up. Um, but he's also in the midst of... Uh, the other, because uh, there were six out here total. I think I misdescribed something earlier. I think I said there was one more than there actually is. There's only four remaining on deck. And all four of these guys are like looking, they're literally like looking at each other and moving towards the three combatants that are on deck, shaking. Like, like they look at, at, at E-404 and none of them want to walk near you. And as they, and they actually like look at their friend, their, their friends, their, their shipmates on the ground, face burned. This guy's head is turned sideways. In your footsteps, there's smoke wafting off the deck of the ship itself. Um, and and the remaining four, all of them just kind of like look and uh, start moving towards Dakul and the dwarf. Um, and... Okay, so you're going to get... Uh, you're, you're each going to get two attacks. Um... And like as as they're coming up to attack you, Dakul, you can like you hear them like, please, please help us, and they're like swinging at you as they're saying like, please, please, please. please. And so, um, one of them misses, uh, and the other one gets a eighteen to hit. Mm -hmm. That hits. Uh, yeah, my armor class is eighteen, so yeah. Okay. Um, so they're they're both wielding short swords. These guys. Um, so you're going to take six points of damage as he as he strikes you. Like even as he as he strikes you, like he's looking at you like, help, please. Just they're almost like trying to whisper, like and they keep looking over their shoulder at the door in the back, um, as if as if uh, they just don't, they don't want to be overheard by something. I, I mean, like, you've seen this behavior, but it's not really making much sense right now as these guys are both attacking you. Um, the dwarf 
he gets attacked by two, uh, but you see him throw some magic up as as a plume of blue energy surrounds him and the, the, the blows deflect off of it where they would have hit him in the side and in the head. And he's just like getting up off the ground, like just trying to maintain his own. Um, he gets a word of encouragement from Xander. It's like, well, it's done! Um, as, as his ship just kind of banks back. Um, and it is, uh, that is their turn. Uh, it is now y'all's turn. From the uh, guy that, I just, I just quick question from, from the guy that 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 hit me. Yeah, it, he's in front of me, and I and the door that he's talking about is behind him. Correct. Yes. Yes. Y'all right. are at the y'all are at the back of this ship, and the door is up here, and it's about it's about uh, it was just another ten feet past the the guy that E just brained. Um, so she's about 20 feet away from that door. Elry, you're about, uh, you're, you kind of landed and went off to the side, right? Like when you well, all Well, El Elry was riding until the steam shot up from the side of E-404's head, and he just yeah. stood up and crossed his arms and looked at the poor bastard that was hit and said, sorry, and, and rolled backwards out of the way, knowing what was coming with the fire. So yeah, okay. he'd be probably about 10 feet off to the right of E-404, just outside of the burn area. Okay, yeah, you kind of rolled off the side. So you're probably about maybe 20, 25 feet away from that door. Uh, e, you, you said you, you didn't move. You just turned your head, right? So, yeah, you're about 10 feet away from this door. Uh, and so then behind you, there's there's two male, two guys each engaged with uh, the, the mage dwarf and, um, and your compatriot, Daku. So that's kind of the setup right now. Um, okay. I believe we need to get to the door. These yeah, El these men do not have the spirits for this. Elry's already on his way there, and he sends the mage hand forward to open the door, as he kind of okay bends up and and since it's already out, that's a bonus action for me, I believe. So, um, I Elry would like to pop the door and see if he can't. I'd like to, as my action get in there and hide, like go stealth and have the door open and then Okay. See if I can so as you as you run forward and you send your 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 invisible, right, Mage Hand? Yeah, you're invisible. You just kind of you see Elry just kind of like flick his hand up and the handle of the door just kind of and just doesn't move. It's it is locked fast. Oh, as, you're, pick. as you're running up towards the door. Can I pick can I pick that shit? You can totally pick that shit. That's what you're born to do. That's a nat 20, baby. Woo. Okay. Uh, well, then what I will allow then, you're like picking, you're trying to open the door and you realize it's it's locked and you just kind of turn your mage hand in and just like, and just the door just kind of springs open just a little bit. Um, and so uh, it, it, it does spring open as you uh, approach it. Um, so do you still want to enter the room, enter the... Uh, Elry's going to pull right up to the side and wait and pull his rapier out, which is incredibly ostentatious. It's got like tassels and stuff hanging off of the guard and pull out one of his daggers as he waits and feeling brave and being brave are two terribly different things. <laughs> and uh, Elry is feeling really brave right now, but he'd be a lot braver if E-404 and the cool were with him and their ship was flying overhead doing other things. <laughs> so it was mm -hmm. by okay. So you, but you're just going to wait there at the, at the side of the door. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the cool and, uh, E. Excellent move. How far away is the, is, is their leader from me? He's not the one that got struck down, right? He's still in the. Oh, no, no, no. E brained the, okay, the leader, yeah. the, the guy oh, speaking oh. in like a monotone voice. Nice. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and, and keep in mind, like E, like you do notice, like he, he looked just as emaciated and, and kind of eyes sunken sharp cheeks as they did. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to dash over to where my friend and compadre is by the unlocked door. And never mind the other guy that's, that's, that's his fighting, because I believe mm -hmm. whoever it is is engaged can handle the emaciated man by himself. Okay. Not to uh, leave him behind. 
So when you say dash, you're using the dash action because you're only about 40 feet away from the door. What's your move? Right, yeah. So for, no, well, I don't have to dash then because I'm, my, my speed is 40. Okay, so you can move up to the door. I can move up to the door. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so you still have your action and, and uh, bonus. Uh, yes, and is, is there somebody by the door? Is there, is there anybody else by the door besides me and LV? Well, uh, on this side, no. Uh, right. Do you just kind of like pop the door open just a little bit to peek inside? Yes, yes. Okay. And, and uh, it, it, can I do like a spot check to see to see what what I can see with my with my half elven eyes? Oh, see, you don't even need to make a spot check because once oh. you pop the door open, okay. you you open up into uh, kind of a, a a longer chamber, and up front you see you see like the glass front of this ship uh, is you know it is kind of the this is kind of the bridge. Um, and about, about 60, uh, no, about 40 feet in front of you, um, into, into this ship. It's, it's a lot smaller than like kind of the bulb, the back of this ship. Mm -hmm. Um, about 40 feet up, there's kind of a rise and kind of a dais and sitting on it. And, uh, there's like a, um, some, some metal, uh, working that kind of curls up in like the most, it almost looks like a torture torture device or something mm -hmm. but you you see the body um the hairy bulbous rear of a spider and these like six legs kind of propped up on this dais and its forward hands are, are forward and, and holding on to these 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 metal rods that end in handles and his hands are on it and there's two more curving pieces of of metal that come up and it looks like they're like in his temple um and he like, you see him like turn like, and obviously the, the platform he's on kind of rotates and he like, as the door opens, he like rotates the platform around and looks over at you. And, and these, 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 these things are obviously semi mobile. They kind of move with him a little bit and he like turns his head and there can be no doubt. Um, uh, Elry, you, you, you gotta, you passed that check earlier. Like this is a Neogi. It's not a big one, but it is definitely a Neogi. Um, and Dakul, now looking at it, you have heard description of these creatures before, with their hairy, furry, like spider-like bodies and eel-like head. They go into like an eel-like neck and head, and they are like just disgusting. And he turns and like opens his mouth with these jagged teeth and just, ah! and you hear him. You hear him speak in a language. Um, uh, uh, he, he spits a curse out. Uh, does, uh, does anybody speak under common? Ooh, I speak deep speech. Mm, no. Okay. Um, like you, you kind of, kind of pick up a little bit of what he's saying to cool. Like it almost sounds familiar uh, with your knowledge of deep speech, but he just kind of spits out this guttural curse at you and you see him like, ah, get them. And you, this is when your attention is drawn away, and there are two more, uh, two more sailors. Basically, these both of these are humans, and they're much bigger. Like these guys, they look like they don't look emaciated like the ones out there, mm -hmm. but they still have this like blank look, and they they both begin start moving forward um, to you. Or, okay. or, or they're they're a, they're about to like like they're they're making a move. This is all happening on your turn. I'm just describing it. But okay. it looks like they're about to start moving towards you. Uh, so you did your move action, and so you still ha you still have your your uh, action bonus. Uh, now is not the op now is not the time to waste. For action is the only thing that we can do. I want to pull my long sword out. Excuse me, not my long sword, my katana out. The one that was hand forged by my teacher. And I want to, want to sprint towards the first one. And giving my first blow, I okay. want to keep in mind that I don't know who this is and use Agile Perry as well. Okay. Um, well, for, okay. So, first off, you used all of your move getting up here. Oh, they're not, they're not right in front of me? No, no, no. They're, they're about 20 feet off on either side, and it looks like they're turning to move towards you. Oh. Right, they're about halfway into the room. He's about forty feet in. They're about twenty, and on either side, and they just kind of were standing against the wall. And now it looks like they're turning to move towards you. So you you still have your you, you don't have any move left, but you do have your action and your bonus. Right. Okay. Well, well, well can I use my agile parry as my bonus? 
Um, no. Agile parry, that's when you make an attack, but you don't use your sword, so you can get a plus two. No, uh, right. but you you could take the dodge action just as right. an action. And well, so yeah. I'm thinking uh, defensively. Okay, so you yes. so you, you just stand in the door and just like adopt a dodge stance? Yes. Okay. Uh, so E, it's your turn. You're about ten uh, feet behind the cool. So I'm behind I'm basically just behind them. Would yeah. I be able to get in and yeah. right up against these guys in my movement of thirty feet? Yeah, you could put you could push past the cool. He's kind of standing in the doorway, but you could just easily like shoulder past him. Um, yeah. so by the way, does your does your does your ability hurt your allies or just your enemies? Uh, I did not say. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, unfortunately, Ethan was not thinking. About okay. Allies. Well, uh, don't worry. Uh, right now, you walk past uh, Elry and Dakul, and both of you take two fire damage as your. Your, uh, and I'll go ahead and look that up while we're continuing on. Um, but as your 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 robotic friend just kind of pushes past to cool, and there's a singe as he as she kind of shoulders past you to cool, and you Ellery, you kind of feel it, and you you like look down, you like you you probably have a sunburn on your face. Um, <laughs> and so, but yes, you can move up to uh, you can move up to those the either of those two guys because they're yeah. again they're spread out, but you can move up to one of them. Yeah. So. so um just to these two guys not to the weird fighter creature that i was just told by chat to kill with fire <laughs> mm -hmm. okay <laughs> yeah so if i can i'm going right up to the yogi <laughs> and if that's if i'm close if i can do it in that movement oh uh, well, he's about 50 feet away oh, okay no so to you, one you of can, the yeah you can move right, up so to i'm gonna one go to them. one of the uh one of the mindless drone people and um just backlit, eyes glowing red, everything glowing red. Let hammer mm -hmm. that. So, do, 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 do. and I did look that up, and any creature within ten feet of you takes that damage. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, she walks uh, by, and basically, like a you know, like a like a burning fire just walks by you in the form yep. of E four hundred four. Yep. Um, so they do. Uh, they hit with a nineteen. That that hits. That most yep. certainly hits. Uh, with that warhammer, uh, that does. Uh, 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 eight points of damage, plus the two. Okay. From fire. So yeah, you walk up to this guy and he's just like turning towards you, and you see his face kind of turning red and smoke wafting off of his beard as it kind of just burns a little bit and you bring your, your hammer down and you hit him like right in the chest and he just <clears throat> and kind of goes down to a knee. He's not out, but he's like down. Um, and so that's, that's the end of, that's the end of your turn. Yes. So yeah, you, you knock the shit out of him. Uh, and uh, so uh, Hilda, what, uh, what are you, what are you doing to harass the, um, I think I want to. Think I want to get right out in front of it, and so it can't see anything. Um, okay. Can't see where it's trying to go. Okay. Um, that's the best thing I can think of, uh, short of crashing into it, which might happen later. I don't know. Um, that's my best guess. Um, sort of. I want to show up. You say this has a glassed-in window on the. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. The front, the front of this is, you know, there's, there's, there's the, uh, the, the view uh, out, and it's just, it looks like some form of, a, some kind of tempered glass, you know. This is a spacefaring vessel. Okay, um, probably gonna have to break that eventually. Um, sorry for spoilers, but um, I think right now I'm. It, can I do some sort of check to see sort of where I think? it would be the most inconvenient place to be. I mean, you know, right in front of it, you know, it would have yeah. to try to maneuver around you. Uh, that seems yes. like a... Because I assume it's a lot stronger than our little racing skiff. I don't want to, like, yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's much bigger, but still, I mean, it probably wouldn't want to take a racing skiff right through the right through the uh, the windshield. Yeah, so I might... I might do that soon. Okay. Not, you just like, want to try to... Min but m put yourself in front? Put myself in front so they can't see what's going on and so I can see better. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's what I want to do. All right. Do I need to do a roll? 
piloting room check? Yeah, just go and give me a piloting check to, to actually maneuver up and get in front of him. Natural one. Hooray! Natural one. So you, you try to, and like one of the, like as you're maneuvering up, one of the legs of the Niyogi like hit, like hits your skiff. Mm-hmm. And you know you're able to control it, but you kind of drop back a little bit, and now you're you're gonna have to catch up to it again. But you know y'all okay. y'all on the Niyogi uh, Death Spider, you feel like it rock a little bit as you look over and you hear the crash of like wood and you know whatever weird material this this ship is. Um, you know it's it's hard to tell right now uh, from where you are, but um, yeah, definitely uh, you feel it. Um, and it looks like uh, Xander saw what you were trying to do, and he he's he's also uh, uh, in in his ship trying to move forward. He has a little bit better luck and manages to get near the, near the front, but he doesn't get quite in front of it um, as he moves forward. Uh, his his dwarf compatriot uh, outside, um, you know, he's it looks like he's um, he's like greased the ground, and a couple of them have. One of them has fallen prone. The other one is is trying to move forward. Uh, the other two are like slowly, like uh, Elry. You see the other two that were that were engaged uh, with. Uh, oh, I should have had them make. Yeah, they missed you anyway. I should sorry. I should have had them make attack opportunities on you, uh, Dakul, as you ran up. So, um, Elry, you see them as they're like moving forward. You see them like look in the door, and their eyes go wide. And and they their face they adopt a, a type of panic that's even worse than before, and they like drop their swords. They're like, and then they look right at you, and they're like, you, "No, you have to hurry, hurry! Oh my God, hurry, hurry! Before he does it, before he hurry!" And um, and so you you, you know you just see them like panicking over over something, um, and. So that makes it back around to the Niyogi's turn. So you hear him bark out in kind of a broken comment, like, destroy them, destroy them. And then he, you see him like look out at the crew uh, that was out on the back deck, um, uh, Dakul, as, as the one runs up to you and tries to swipe at you with his, uh, it looks like he has like kind of like a club, like a heavy club. Uh, and you were taking a defensive stance. Okay. Hold a five and a 20. So, uh, he misses as he like hits the, uh, as you just kind of bring your sword up and ching, just like knock it away, uh, at the last second. And, uh, E404, this guy, like, is trying to stand up like it's Rocky in the 15th round. Um, I rolled a 20. So uh, he, he, he crits just on Just like you. Rocky in the 15th Yeah, round. just like Rocky in the 15th. Um, so yeah, you're going to take uh, nine damage as he like brings his club up and hits you like right across the face. Um, and the Niyogi like looks back at the guys through the doorway that are back on deck. And he's and he just kind of <laughs> and like maybe it's laughter. You're not really sure, but he just starts to like cough, like <laughs> <laughs> you failed, <laughs> and like reaches forward and like you see him flick this switch on the front of his the 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 dais of his his kind of control panel apparatus, um, and from below underside of the ship, y'all hear like. The sound of like servos or, or some kind of like some kind of latch being released, um, and uh, he'll, y'all don't really know what's going on in the ship, except you see the guys on deck freaking the fuck out. Hilda, from underneath, you see what looks like a compartment of the the abdomen of this ship um, loosen, slip, and then fall free. And as it starts to fall, everyone on the deck and on the ship can hear the screams, multiple, maybe women, some children, you're not really sure, but you hear "Ah!" as it starts to fall away from the ship. And on the deck, they're screaming, oh my God, no! And that's where we're gonna Uh, off for this week. (laughs) Ah! We 
we were just about to get into the oh, well done. He's Pruitt. What? <laughs> but but what? Ah. So anyway, that is the the, the first uh, installment. Uh, we're gonna have to. This is obviously gonna be a to be continued as the uh, the crew abandons the race. Bold choice. Uh, uh, and uh, you're you are making your ascent up, and uh, and yeah, like uh, not really sure, but it looks like this compartment is broken away, and we're just gonna have to see what happens next week. Um, so. Yeah. Before we go out, uh, let's go around uh, kind of in uh, reverse order. Uh, tell us who you are, where you would like people to uh, to hit you up, or you know whatever you're doing online, and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, so we'll start with you, Trey. Uh, yeah, man, this is great. Um, my my character is that cool. He's the half elf with the uh, with the cool jewels in his ears. Smoking his smoking the his his herbal essences from from his monastery. Uh, my real name is Trey Murphy. I can easily be reached. My social media is uh, at Sintel for um, for uh, uh, the, 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 the the Twitter verse. Uh, it's at Sintel for um, Instagram as well. Uh, so please feel free to hit me up whenever you want. What an excellent start, man! I'm I'm, I'm loving my compadres that are with us. A partners in war. Not an amazing DM. You know, I, I, I couldn't be happier. And what a cliffhanger to leave off on, man. I mean, I have no idea what madness is about to unfold on deck with what we're dealing with now and all the innocents that's tumbling to their foreseeable death. I don't know. So I guess we just got to stay tuned, man. It was good. It was well done. All right. Uh, so, uh, Emma? It's been a while. How, how'd, you, how'd you like it? I think it was great. Um, I did get, I should have crashed it the first chance I got, you guys. <laughs> I should have. I was like, oh, if people are one more round, maybe they can do something cool. No, just crash into the fucker every time. Um, I had a great time. Uh, my name is Emma Lambert. I am the communications director of WebDM. I have my own Twitter, King 85 But really, if you're talking to WebDM, you're probably talking to me. Um, so go ahead and follow that, like that. Talk to me about what you like, what you don't like, what you want. Uh, just because I know people are asking, this will be on video on demand right away. And it will also be broad broadcast at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday. I um, been answering that a lot. So there you go. Um, thank you so much. I'm so excited. Pruitt, it's like, it's like wrapping up in an old blanket. We've been gaming together for almost 15 years. That we have. <laughs> and it has be been, back. it has been far too long since we have gamed together. So this was a lot, very exciting for me. Uh, Kiana. Oh my God. That was so much fun. I love this already. I love all of the characters. They're, they're all so great. They all have like, they're all so quirky and like I, the, the dynamics already is already great. I was really excited that I could actually go into a rage in the first fight, uh, which, you know, the aftermath is going to be interesting uh, for that. But yeah, I, I, I'm glad all of you are liking uh, E4-4. Uh, they, are, <laughs> they are my little robot baby who may be a killing machine. Maybe. Just maybe. <laughs> but, I'm not... I'm not but. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying, Correct? I was gonna say I'm not really sure that the maybe is applicable at this point. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> First blood. Um, anyways, uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Kiana S. Um, don't worry, I'll put all the, the links in chat so you can find me all there. Uh, on Sundays, I am on a podcast uh, called Lady Slaying Dragons, where it's me and a couple of other cool ladies, uh, where we just chat about all things uh, tabletop and RPGs. Uh, we're actually taking uh, topic ideas right now, so if you go on that Twitter, uh, you can send us some ideas to what we should talk about uh, in the future. And on Thursdays, if you like what I'm putting down here, I am the Dungeon Master of Tales from the Twisted Tower over on Encounter Roleplay. That's twitch.tv slash Encounter Roleplay. So if you guys like, uh, if you guys like things uh, like Twisted Fairy Tales and shenanigans and a lot of meta kind of fun, that's definitely the place to be. Uh, but otherwise, I'll be waiting until... 
Tuesday where we got to do more of this and I can't, I just can't wait. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, last but not least, Greg. I had a blast, man. I had a, a, it is, it was a fantastic job. Pacing was fantastic, brother. You did a, 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 Great, great job getting us there, getting the explanation down, getting us through the race, giving us the option to pull up, you know, all of it felt very organic, very sandboxy. And I loved that aspect of it. You know, the decisions were ours, which is always the best part of D&D. And you are the best part of D&D, my friend. You're everything that needs to be done. And I had a fantastic time playing with you, man. Uh, Elry's going to take some getting used to because usually I'm really dour and not yeah. happy and- <laughs> it up so uh, i i i'm loving the characters and the interaction the players are fantastic uh anytime i can sit back and almost forget to rp myself i know i'm in fantastic company and that was the case tonight uh grimjack 21502 on the twitches and the twitters tomorrow you can see me on encounter roleplay from one to four eastern with the dm as we battle cthulhu uh and lose terribly and then tomorrow night you can see me on unmade gaming's channel doing little city of mist uh, Saturday nights from 6 to 9 Eastern on D&D's channel for Learn by Play and my own channel on Sundays from 7 to 9, Grimjack 21502 for a little Pulp Cthulhu Project Athena. It's real pulpy. We punch Nazis. It's fun. Join us. Chat was fantastic. Love talking to you guys, but I can't wait for next Tuesday. Awesome. Word back. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you to all the players. Uh, God, that was so much fun. I have not DM'd in forever. Uh, I felt like I had to knock off a little bit of rust. Uh, I think we did that. Uh, but everyone's characters are so great. I love, I love how fucking cool the cool is. I mean, it's right in his name. How could you miss it? Um, I love how concerned, uh, Hildegard is. Uh, she is, she is uh, the, the essence of just motherhood and creation, right? And that's just what I see. Sorry. Uh, E404, you killing machine, Jesus Christ. Uh, and Elry, I mean, who, who, who doesn't love, uh, a, a little halfling hopping around like a tiny little Jack Sparrow being a badass? Um, so, I mean, what, what more do you want? So yes, uh, I'm, you know, I'm Pruitt. Uh, obviously I'm co-host of WebDM. You can hit me up at, at J Pru Inc. on, uh, on the Twitters there. And I wanted to give a big shout out to Brandon Herbert, our, uh, the producer for this show. He's been doing all the music cues and flipping up all the, all of the, uh, images that you've been seeing on screen. He's been putting together all, uh, most of this stuff. And I can't, I would be remiss if I did not, uh, give a shout out to Alexa Bonner, the artist for, uh, all the character art, uh, a few of the uh, images there. You can hit her up over on Twitter uh, at uh, Alexa. That's Alexa with an H uh, underscore art. Um, and so, yeah, you should go. Uh, you should go look her up there, and uh, she might do some awesome fucking character art for you because uh, uh, she's a badass. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You are damn right. Uh, but anyway. Uh, we love you out there. Hope you had a lot of fun and we'll see you back next, uh, next Tuesday for more hijinks and do not forget, uh, this is only one of two shows that WebDM is launching. So come back to this channel on Thursday, same bad time, same bad channel. And you can pick up, uh, with the land between two rivers being run by the incomparable Jim Davis, my, my DM for life, my DM boo and bay, uh, and uh, yeah, you're, it's going to be good. I mean, this just is because he is. So you're going to love it. Um, but as always, uh, we love you out there. And may the dice ever roll in your favor.